Hello. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Mega 64 podcast. Tonight, we have a special guest. He goes by many names around here on the internet in these parts. You may know him as Dad. You may know him as Keith Apicari. You may know him as Skittles. But he's our friend to us. He's Nathan. Skittles. Hey, it's Skittles. It's Skittles. <laughs> Skittles. It's actually Skittles. There you Skittles. go. Sorry, sorry. Well, according to Trail, the man, Skittles spokesperson, Trail of us. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Hello, welcome. Thanks for having me. Hey, what's up? Not much. Uh, we got the itinerary this week that Sean had a terrible dance class story to share. <laughs> so we have eh, him from the roster. Um, you're looking at the new blood on the set nega 64,000 in, inject, yes. inject some positivity none of this uh oh maureen stood in front of me at my kids uh <laughs> dance class or whatever we're not that's out he's in nice so, nice this is you what know it's all about. i would even say i've been involved with you guys so much that maybe i am already sort of a member of mega 64. there's yeah, a lot yeah, of people yeah, on your yeah. wikipedia i mean i was the uh, to toot my own horn as an honor, I will say, I was the only one, I think, last time I talked to you guys, to be a reoccurring guest at Game Days, right? Oh, yeah, yeah that's and right. You still that's are. true. You, you still are. are. That is an honor. And I, I, would, I you know, if anyone ever does come back, it's an honor for them. But it's <laughs> great for me to have that title right now. You were at Game Days <laughs> when we had a separate exhibition room and you taped a bunch of garbage to the wall. If I remember correctly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I sure did. I forgot about that. that. Oh, uh, yeah, we ran the store out of a secondary room that one year. <laughs> yeah, that was a fun year. That, that... <laughs> Your event started a whole thing for a few years of mine. I was like, oh, this is a funny bit for Keith. Because so many people set up booths at conventions. Like, yeah. Have you been to too many games in um, Pennsylvania? That, that No. Like, I haven't been there, but know about it. Yeah. yeah about so yeah. after your thing, I was like, oh, this is funny. Because I never have stuff to bring for a booth. I just like, yeah. I don't bring shirts. I don't bring merch. Because I just go and I just run around and cause chaos as Keith. <laughs> so I was like, oh, this is funny. If Keith's like, I have no merch. And he basically is saying, my merch is garbage anyway. So if you buy my shirts, they're bad. <laughs> So my whole bit was put trash, knocked over. I brought, I actually put a lot of effort into that. I brought pallets. I brought dented trash cans, actual yeah. garbage from dumpsters <laughs> I found and brought it with me down to your convention, filled my car with it and, <laughs> and placed it all where I set it was like dress. newspaper yeah, it was prop, everywhere. Prop, prop yeah, it was like a lot of actual that. trash that I got and drove it down to <laughs> Anaheim. You prepared a lot to come to game. I did. Yeah, you did because you I did. thought it would be a cool, and a lot of people were taking pictures like they're laying in the trash and like your head's in the trash can. And if they took a picture with Keith, I would go head first in the trash can and my legs are sticking out and then they'd be <laughs> standing there with me. And the, it was so funny because they weren't getting my face. The picture with me uh -huh. was my feet in the air in a yeah. trash can. Yeah. After that, I did it at a lot of conventions and then too many games eventually stopped me from doing it. They're really? like, you guys, I'm doing it. Although, okay, that's a little bit of a lie because I then started chopping down trees in the woods across the street and I brought in full trees as my <laughs> booth setting. <laughs> that's the thing, you can look it up on the internet. Keith Abacary <laughs> booth, too many games. Chops I down trees. I did the trash two years there and then uh, I didn't have the trash. So I was like, what am I gonna do? And I thought I'd just make it a jungle. Like I filled the whole booth up with like trees. I duct taped them to the poles and like my little booth was literally <laughs> a jungle. Yeah. And I ended up, it went, it started as big branches yeah. and then I had fans helping me and we ended up getting like a, a whole trees in, <laughs> in this booth. And that's when too many games was like, you should stop doing um, this. And there's just a, like, dirt, uh, there's yeah. a path of dirt from there the was yard. Bugs, there was actual <laughs> bugs and stuff coming. Cause we were like, there were, <laughs> bugs. It, it got crazy. You uh, 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 like, I'm curious what your whole approach is when you go to a live event, because I feel like comic con. Uh, what you're describing for too many games, our event, you're very much outside the box. Yeah, yeah. And, it's, you know, to the point where maybe the people running the convention don't like it. Yeah, they get confused. <laughs> they get worried because they're like, what, what's happening? Like people who are just like volunteers walk by and they're like, what's happening? Yeah. <laughs> and they don't know what I've talked to the event organizers as well. It was, and then usually it's nothing. But a lot of people <laughs> who invite me now know like, okay, if we're inviting Keith, He's Nate, climbing Nathan. something. Something's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. And there's sure. one convention that I love, Free Play Florida in Florida, in, or oh. in Orlando. They know me inside and out. They go, do your thing. And just and they let me, they built me a drivable Neo Geo cabinet that was attached <laughs> to like a, like a handicap thing, like a car. Like a rascal that, or something. Uh, it, right? It's like driving a forklift, oh. so it's really awkward. Oh, like whoa. Oh. Hairpin turns and it like, <laughs> tips over a lot. So they let me drive, and I, I figured out how I could get on top of it and drive it with my toes. Dude, Mr. Bean style. It was like, I basically would stand on the Neo Geo <laughs> like this on the roof. I'd be up here, and I'd be driving it like with my toe 
So I could like be standing in like a victorious position. This is a recreation. And of I often <laughs> fell <laughs> off. I often smash into things, but they're like they loved it because, yeah, yeah. and they just like this. Spectacle. It was a bunch of old men with pinball machines, and then me. Like doing that. Oh, that's good. Do you mix. think? Do you think you've ever gone too far, or what's like the uh, most trouble you've ever uh, uh, raised? Yeah. The most hell you've ever raised what, at a convention? What, is there anything where you were just like, man, uh, maybe I shouldn't have done that? I don't think I've ever regretted anything. Uh-huh. I do regret if I ever like make someone actually upset and like, I I don't think I've ever harmed anyone accidentally, yeah, 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 physically. But I don't ever want to make people like off like get anxiety or freak out okay. i'm just kind of like doing my own thing and it's like oh there goes a crazy man he's running yeah. around so i don't ever want to bother people so if i ever get like something every a moment i regret it's like that if i made someone feel awkward or something yeah or put someone on a camera who didn't want to be on camera sure but other than that i don't know i just kind of like goofing around and i don't prepare i just show up and figure things out the, the trash thing i thought okay i'll bring trash that's okay. pretty much the of my preparing yeah. then the rest of the time i just run around and I don't know. I feel like when I, I don't have stuff to bring, like the T-shirts, but my the experience of Keith and me, yeah. the live interaction is sort of what people talk about after. Yes. And then they'll go look me up and then they'll get shirts. Maybe I don't often I'm a bad businessman. I'm more of like a just it's, I don't want to say it, but like a weird artist in the nerd world <laughs> on the Internet. <laughs> yeah. who just likes to ex- I like to experiment and do strange things. And I really like live interaction. So yeah. I love Twitch and doing mm-hmm. all that stuff. I just yeah. like to like interact and do crazy things. Yeah. Andy Kaufman level stuff mm, yeah and it, 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 when i'm in character it becomes sort of any coffee because i forget i'm in character and i just stay in the character and i'm just talking as keith the whole time yeah you, know? you yeah. go to another place and yeah just i really do like, i totally forget that's that cool I'm to in hear. character and like who i am and i'm just like this is the reality right now i'm i live in this jungle of trees and i don't know i, get <laughs> I just remember <laughs> the jungle i'm well, back again i was curious if you because I, I you probably talked about it a bunch of times i'm i'm gonna imagine in other places but the one thing, because the one thing I remember is like, didn't you crawl into the baggage claim thing? And then, oh, that was, yeah, that wasn't that a big issue or that something? That was a big issue. I okay. don't regret that. I don't think it went too far yeah. either. Okay. I think <laughs> it didn't go far enough. Just I just PSA. remember he seeing like, uh, yeah. yeah, because of the situation, I was like, oh, it's just the police. And like, this is, this is a funny night for the cops. So, like, whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah so, you didn't hurt anybody. No, I didn't you know, Yeah, it you're just, not met. You know. A janitor called TSA on me, and that yeah. he was like, what's happening right now? But I always play it as like an aloof guy. And they're like, oh, yeah, this, this moron. Like, so it's not malicious, the stuff. Good. But yeah. yeah, I climbed up into the baggage claim as Keith coming back from PAX to get my final bit because I was supposed to be. That's how Keith got to PAX. Yeah, he, that's he was right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so I needed a shot where Keith was falling out of the baggage claim. So, oh, he was in the cargo hold. That's how yeah. he got to PAX because the plane the airline wouldn't let him on. Yeah. After doing a whole episode in the airport in Texas, the, the bit became known that Keith can't fly. Yeah. So uh-huh. in the episode, I needed to get that shot. And in doing so, TSA showed up, uh, then called the cops. There was the airport cops already there. They zip tied me, oh, and they, I was in my license picture is legit. Like I'm a, I look crazy. I'm like, <laughs> look, my hair is out, my eyes are crossed. And me and my brother, like, we try to compete in like the ugliest uh, license pictures. So <laughs> it, I look like the guy they're talking to. Yeah, you yeah. know, and when they look at my license, they're like, oh, he's just nuts. So that one though, I remember I so I was nervous about them taking the footage and then going, yeah. oh, this guy's doing a bit, was taking the jail, he's being a jackass. Uh-huh. If they knew I was filming, I think they'd be mad. So I didn't want them to know I was filming. So I uh-huh. broke the camera down before the cop and the guy was like, what are you doing? I was like, oh nothing. And I was breaking the camera down and I shoved it in my bag and I took the memory card. I stuck it between my, yeah. my butt cheeks. Oh! Smart. Smart. Because I didn't want them to yeah. search for it. So I, I was holding the memory card literally in my butt cheeks. My, my boxers were holding it in there for the most That's part. That's great. Um, yeah. Very tense. And I, I just didn't want them to look in the camera and be like, oh, we get it. Um, so they're like, what are you doing? Why are you up there? I was like, I uh, wanted to see what it looked like inside. And I thought it was like a network of uh, like Monsters, Inc. when they're on the doors and they're going through the whole like <laughs> conveyor belt thing. I was like, I wanted to see if that was real. I was talking the like Monsters, Keith. Inc. defense. Yeah. Right. yeah. You right, stayed right, in right. character. I stayed in character the whole time. I did that at Comic-Con where at the James Cameron panel where I jumped. That one I feel a little guilty about. Okay. Jumping on there? panel at James... At, Comic-Con with James oh. Cameron and Peter Jackson. Oh, that's right. I forgot about yeah. that. Yeah. On that Hall H. Right? I totally the forgot airport, about that. The airport, I don't care because like it was like, whatever. Who cares? Yeah, they let the, me go. They're like, you're an idiot. Don't do that. Yeah, and yeah, I was yeah. Like, okay. it, it, no harm, no foul. But I didn't like to disrupt their what they a planned convention yeah. uh, panel. Yeah. That my, bro- my brother and I were walking by. We were about to leave, and there was a huge Hall H panel. Yeah. And I was like, what's going on in there? And some guy was like, oh, Peter Jackson. And I was like. I'm going to jump on. I had this impulsive thought of like, I'm just going to jump up and like, just see if I can get a sip of water and then run away and leave. Yeah, That'd be it. yeah. Okay. It became a whole thing where I jumped up there and I started announcing things. I was like, <laughs> okay, everyone, calm down. I had the big Sega Manister gun. Yeah. And uh, 
Sorry, I'm, re- I'm, I'm really no, 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 this story. No, yeah. What year was this? Do you remember? Everybody calm yeah, down. I'm trying to remember when that was. Uh, like, our Bud Dwyer footage. Maybe it was early days of Keith. It was like 2010 or something. Oh, okay, like okay. My okay. second Comic-Con or whatever. Uh, it was. Oh, my God. Yeah, I think it was like 2010. I jumped up there. And I know the reason I regret it and feel guilty about it because it wasn't even funny. It was like there was no bit. It was just stupid. <laughs> yeah, I know what you're saying. If I had a planned thing, it was like yeah. really worth it. Like this was a good punchline at the end, yeah. but it was like I just grabbed his water and then they kicked me out. And I was like, this was kind of stupid. Well, it's like type two funny because talking about it now, it's pretty now hilarious. it's funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because a as a 42 year old man, I realized what a moron yeah. I've been. But you know, it's it's kind of a neat story to tell now. So yeah, they, the security grabbed me. They actually the security hit me in the face backstage. Oh. I, I was trying to drink oh. the water, and the guy goes, "Put the water down." And he like punched me like this oh. and oh my knocked God. the water out of my hand. And he broke the glass. The Keith glass. I was like, "Oh, wait, 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 wait!" wait. The Comic Con security? Yeah, it's Comic Con security. What? You can see the guy. The guy that pulls me off stage. The elite oh. guy. He's, he's in my footage. He's in my video. And right when we got behind the curtain, he whacked because I was in character time. I was like, I just wanted water. And I was drinking it, keeping the bit yeah. going with the guy. So he would be like, think I really just was thirsty. And I saw a cup of water. Yeah, there, yeah, and that's yeah, what yeah. I was doing. Yeah. So I just stuck with that. So he wouldn't. Convention security is psychotic. Like, yeah. They you really interrupted are. the wrong panel, buddy. <laughs> yeah. I do <laughs> think it was a moment like where this guy got. He finally had a chance to do his yes, job. Yes, totally. Yeah. Yes, normally I've seen they're that. not doing anything. Right. So, yeah. And it's you, not like you're a real criminal, and it's not like the event was really that important. Yeah. Like Peter yeah, Jackson yeah. plugging a movie. Yeah. You know, yeah. but you get socked in the face over it. But you see that happen a lot with some of these concerts where like someone will get kind of on stage, like dancing a little bit, uh-huh. and a security guard who hasn't been doing anything all night will like tackle them run full force and fly them off the stage. And it's like, oh yeah. my God, it wasn't, you didn't that need person to. person was dancing. Yeah, yeah, you didn't need to <laughs> like potentially like destroy their body for the rest of their lives. You know, uh, oh, yeah, I understand either. you got to do something, but it's like they're, yeah, they're excited to actually do something for the night. I, that's how it yeah. felt. Like there was yeah. a ton of them around me too. They're like, like oh, what, what do you need? And I was like, I'm this 150 pound skinny man. Yeah. Like, <laughs> who sounds so non-threatening and they're like all yeah. holding me down. Easy target. Uh, the, hot yeah. shots. the two. Oh, what were you saying? I was just saying, I got out of it by saying a character and they just get so weirded out every time. They don't know what to say. They go, just go, just away. go away. Yeah. yeah. That's what the cops said too. The That's cops great. said, just go away. The cops actually, it was funny to end this one. It was, they started searching through my bag and I just came from PAX. So I had a virtual boy in there. Yeah. I had a Sega Justifier. I had a, a, a dream, a, no, sorry, a Sega CD that I wear as a Walkman <laughs> on my waist. So they're like, what is this? They saw the Justifier gun. I was like, that's a Sega Justifier. It was actually a legendary in the light gun scene. It did took a disaster. <laughs> yeah. And then they were like, what's this? I was, that's a virtual boy way ahead of his time. It's the first virtual reality device. Technically not really virtual reality. It's just flashing lights, but still kind of cuts. And they were like, oh my God. Stop! These are toys. <laughs> Shut up, nerd. <laughs> Staying in character, they're like, yeah. just go, please leave. Oh, <laughs> so, that's so good. Well, what I was gonna say is the two things I can identify with here is one, I had to get good at the. I trained myself in the, the same art that you have mm-hmm. with uh, hiding the memory card. I never, no, I never put it in my butt. Mm-hmm. But yeah. uh, and I've never really had to use it. But I can think of two times where security was like, oh well. He's doing he's doing this thing here. I'm I'm gonna take his camera. That's yeah, what we have yeah, to do. Yeah. And actually, both times it happened, they had someone higher than them go like, "Hey, like, you you're not supposed touch to touch it. them or take their yeah, stuff." Exactly. Yeah. So that because this happened, we were shooting at a mall once, and uh, yeah, so I've only had to do it twice. But yeah, he he started going for the camera, and yeah, before he could even like get his eyes on it, I had like. All right, and then so he's wrestling the camera. I'm like, like even if he takes this, I've got all you got the, the yeah, everything we shot. Smart. But uh, so fortunately, I haven't had to use that too many times. But then the other thing I, I identify with is like the playing dumb thing. Mm-hmm. A lot of times, whenever we've encountered security or police or whatever, we double down in the other direction to work with them. We we we're never like confrontational uh, or uh-huh. you know whatever because I mean this is just a stupid thing we're doing. But we actually go in the opposite direction where security will be in like a stadium we're not allowed to be in and getting a shot security rolls up and Sean will literally literally go oh thank god you're here we don't we don't actually know if our is it okay that we're in here and they'll be like no you have to go okay yeah we were trying to ask we're trying (laughs) to find find someone to ask okay cool well now we know and then we walk away and they're all and it disarms them they're just like yeah well you're good okay good now we know we met met in the middle okay great 
cool. Do their job for them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We're, we're always funny. like, oh, you're here. Thank God. Yeah, we didn't know if we should juggle torches in the middle of a restaurant. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, that, I guess we'll stop now. I, yeah. Okay. Then, we'll, then are we good? We're good. Okay, cool. And then it's like, that's the end There was of it. no sign that said, don't. We wanted to find security that could tell us to confirm <laughs> we shouldn't be doing what we're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. responded yeah. to it's our call. Like, yeah. So anyway. Yeah, you so, guys probably got in a lot of similar situations because that's what you guys do is a crazy <laughs> crazy person in public yeah so it's it was always harder though doing you know there's things that we filmed in the past that were uh you be in a crazy costume or mm -hmm. like you know i'm if you're dressed as like a creature then it's, it's not obvious. that big of a deal because yeah. people are just like i don't know what this is whatever but when you yeah. are dressed normal and acting and, and weird I, keith is oh semi normal he's wearing yeah. clothes yeah exactly and just yeah. glasses yeah. that's why people get <laughs> when right. when you have more of a, a theatrical appearance, then it's like, okay, yeah. they're doing a bit. Goes over yeah. well. Yeah. But you question the guy who looks like he might have a bomb under his yeah. shirt. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. The, one of the most terrifying ones we ever shot, it's weird because we've probably done riskier things, but you know, I'm playing a character or we're doing a thing and it's not mm. that big of a deal. But like we did one where I was Nathan Drake because mm -hmm. uh, there's a, uh, our skit was, there was a part of Uncharted 3 where he gets drugged. Mm. So he's going like, oh, trying to get through crowds. So we have it looking real surreal. And then it cuts to what it really looks like. And it's me in a crowd going, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like that. Yeah. And yeah, that one, it was just like all help, eyes on this help guy. This guy. Call what that is he doing? You're on drugs? What's wrong with him? Uh -huh. He's rolling around on a table. Oh my God, what, what you know? Yeah. And uh, that's when it gets the most like, oh, something scary is happening. Yeah, but you like, did the same oh, thing that. dressed as like Assassin's Creed. And they were like, no, <laughs> secret ninja. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah. this guy's being weird. Costume, so exactly. uh, yeah. what was the inside of the baggage claim like? Can you tell us? Yeah, I, it's, uh, I've always dreamed of what, you know, <laughs> what, what to see. Like, you know, I don't know if I actually saw. It <laughs> might have just been blackness where I went well, that's to. that's not as fun. I can't remember what was up there because I did. I went up so that the shot would be completely gone. Uh -huh, I went yeah. complete. I have to. I might have to do it again and let you know. <laughs> yeah, I wear a body camera. Wear yeah, we're going. What the heck? I have to rethink about this and let you know because yeah. I can't think. I can't picture it in my head what it looks like. I just remember going up. It was so fast. I remember going up and I was. I like give myself one, two, so I could have a second of pre roll before yeah. the shot starts. Yeah, and you roll then in. Then rolled out. Yeah. yeah, I don't remember what I. I might have just been looking down at my feet. You're the only wow. one I know is gone beyond the. Threshold. Yeah, seriously. Wow, my That's... memory was wiped. <laughs> We had to, I might have to get a job at, as TSA just to get that information, then quit and then let you know. It probably right. is like or the just monster Keith Abercary makes a comeback and does another airport. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, whatever's easier. I was gonna say something. You were talking about the uh, oh the the drug thing. I do a character who's the drunkest guy in the world, oh. uh, Bryce Onan, and. I got so many people trying to help me. And that became the, the bit. I was like, oh. oh, this is it then. See how many good Samaritans there are. This guy, oh my God, I feel so bad for this guy. That in a back, I do this guy called Back Pain Wayne where I'm bent backwards at this ton. Yeah. And I'm walking around trying to do chores. I'm like, oh, trying back to grab pain, stuff. Wayne. This I've woman seen that, massaged yeah. my back. <laughs> oh, she, oh, and then massage therapy. therapy. This lady was so nice in the grocery store. And then an old man in the grocery store, I saw my friend filming like way down the another aisle. And the guy goes, by, he goes, they're filming a bit. And she goes, eh. She was rubbing my back. I was laying on the ground in the middle of the grocery store. She's like, you poor thing. Oh, I was like, oh my gosh, I should marry oh, this woman. She's oh, so nice. Oh, she was rubbing my back, being so nice to me. I didn't know how to tell her I'm doing a bait. I was just trying to like get her to go away. Yeah. I like, oh, thanks. I think I'll be, I'll be good. And then my the guy walks by and goes, they're filming a bit. And she goes, you a-holes. Oh my God. And I was like, I'm so sorry. You weren't supposed to be that nice. I didn't expect this. Yeah. I'm just trying to do a bit. That and then the drunk guy, this guy, a waiter was like, trying to do was shift and he's also giving me water he's like drink this pal drink this you'll be all good oh. I was like, oh yeah sure what's up dude? <laughs> and then it's like walk away like get away from this man because i don't want his help anymore because it's killing the bit it's also yeah. giving me a bit but yeah people are really kind when they it's kind of a neat show i thought yeah. there's a concept yeah. there's a concept i did for ifc we're working on a show a prank show just to show good, the good of humanity. Yeah. Like I got my head stuck in a manhole. I'm upside down for 20 minutes. Who's going to help this guy? Yeah. Like there's a prank show that's like rewarding in a way. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. we never did it because I got bored. We, when we, we did an Oregon Trail it. skit where Rocco was dying of dysentery and just went to a restaurant and pretended to be like really sick with diarrhea. <laughs> you know, yeah. not our finest moment, but it was a good video. No, and again, it's the same thing. People just yeah. came out to help bit. him. Came out to help bit. him. Like, I think what do you need? Like, can we help you? I think there's a lot. Yeah. There's a lot of videos that have showcased that there are a lot of good people. We, I, because you were thinking of that. I was thinking <laughs> of, uh, we did a Bioshock Infinite video where, uh, we, we planted uh, in that game, you would just find food on the ground and, mm -hmm. and every literally all over the place. You just pick up, oh, there's a sandwich on the floor. Okay, health. Okay, whatever. <laughs> so we planted food all over a park, just like, okay. And I'm going to trash cans, like, oh, there's a whole turkey. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. there's ice cream in the trash can, you know, yeah. I'm eating that. And yeah, this woman came up. She went and bought a burrito and just like, oh. hey, she was like, hey, 
you don't have to do that anymore today. I, whatever you want. Here's a burrito, whatever you want. And we were just like, oh my God. And so I, I'm eating it in character. And then it was like, hey, let's cut and like go talk to her. And yeah, she, yeah, yeah. she took off. She split. It was like, no, we wanted to like uh, pay her back. Let, like, her, let yeah. her think she did a good yeah. deed. We wanted we to like, reward her like yeah. living on the streets. Like you no, were really I, finally I was dressed. dressed fancy. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You know, ascot and like fucking nice <laughs> yeah. vest. Spent all your money on your clothes. Can't even get any food. <laughs> but yeah. I think the, the best one was though, is we did uh, Death Stranding a couple of years ago uh -huh. where I kept, I was like trying Ooh, to carry stuff. That was yeah. so funny. And then I ate shit and dropped all of it. And dude, the, all these like 12 year old kids were like, we got to help this guy. So and they funny. all gather. They're all gathering the packages together. And it was like, yeah, oh, my God, this, this, well, these are the sweetest kids. You know, <laughs> like, thank you so much. And their mom was there. It was like, look, wow. look, at they did this without. She didn't have to tell them. They just. Anyway, it, so you know what? And that that was like in the we like we we're like, look, this is the next generation. They're they're helpful. That's yeah, like yeah. that's the theme of Death Stranding is the teach the next generation. It's not like in the eighties or nineties <laughs> when everyone made fun of you and, and like kicked you when you were down. <laughs> yeah, the times have changed. People the are zoomers nice now. now are all like I I noticed the change. I actually talked to some young kid. Where was I? Sometimes to some young like early twenties or teens recently mm. at like a creator class or something. And I said, you know, I always thought in my head after I saw 21 Jump Street remake and the whole bit of that was the teens at school loved recycling yeah. and they wore their backpacks on straight. They didn't do the half side back. <laughs> so I, I was like, oh, maybe young kids are like responsible and more earth conscious now. And then all these kids that I talked to, wherever that was the past month, they were like, yeah, it's true. We all think about that. And I was like, oh, all right. So mm -hmm. I thought it was like a joke, but it's <laughs> yeah. true. So these that's, kids that's don't know how to be cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But if you did a prank show, a prank video in the 90s, people would like, oh, yeah. you know, throw trash at you. Yeah, laugh, yeah. You know, laugh yeah. at you. That's the era that I feel like mentally we're still birthed out of. <laughs> yeah. 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 We're a little too mean for our own good sometimes my brain yeah. is stunted yeah. in 97 yeah. still yeah. <laughs> so you mentioned creator clash that's the uh, where we last saw you a few weeks ago yes, yes, um yes. and uh we were talking before the show started and you were training a lot before creator clash but now mm. you're done with your boxing training at the moment yeah yeah i haven't done it i boxed one time after creator clash and it was mostly just like a, an hour class of like hitting the bag doing combos okay. just to like stay active but I've since been just streaming on Twitch. <laughs> Dad feels on Twitch. That's right. And uh, literally playing 24-7, just playing games, hanging out. I, I've eaten a lot of stuffed crust pizza, drank a lot of wait, wait, Where are you nice. getting the stuffed crust pizza? Let's let's just pizza get that hut. out of the way. Pizza, pizza. Hut. Not pizza. Hey, Caesars. that's still no, the OG, okay. right? Pizza. I think it's the first stuffed crust, right? Yeah, it was. I still, still got it. Still the, the whole boxing tr training camp this year. I was craving stuffed crust pizza. That's like my guilty yes. pleasure is uh, eating a stuffed crust pizza the whole yes. thing in one yeah. sitting. I love it <laughs> so yeah. much. So I was like, I'm getting a stuffed crust pizza as soon as this boxing yeah. match is over. And I did. And then I did again and again <laughs> and, and many times. April <laughs> might be here. April's a, a person I was a fan of mine and I, we've met a few times. She was at Creator Clash. She gave me a hundred dollar Pizza Hut gift card oh, at, nice. at, at Creator Clash because she's like, she's like, you, you're gonna win and mm -hmm. you're gonna get that pizza. I've had three pizzas oh, because of April. Did you get nice. did you get your first pizza in Tampa still? Or did, did you I make get, it? Did you make it back to LA? My chat would know. I can't remember. It's all been a blur since. Like, uh, there's April right there. Keith Abaker email. Thank uh, you. Um, hello, April. I can't remember because there was a, everything's been a blur the past. What was like, across months. the street from our hotel? It was a Domino's. Yeah. Across the street. What did I do? Oh, I don't think slammed. I. Oh slammed. yeah. No, I didn't. Yeah. I did not get. I got pizza with Amaranth on one of her streams. That's what it was. I was trying to remember. I know I ate pizza, but it was at a regular small pizza place. Uh, in Florida. In Florida. Gotcha. Amaranth was streaming. I mean, S Fan and Yoda and Bo Big Tall Bob, you guys yeah. know him. He, oh, yeah, we yeah. all went and hung out and got pretty good pizza, but it was no Pizza Hut stuffed crust. Yeah, that's nah, for sure. Well, let same. me just let me make a recommendation. A lot of other places have tried the stuffed crust and they're mm -hmm. always kind of, they're they're a little mid, mm -hmm. but you got to do the Little Caesars stuffed pretzel crust pizza. Ooh. Oh. You, that, trust me, pretzel that'll, crust. that'll be up there for you. I'll that'll try it, but I'll tell you, I'm afraid of trying it because the last time I had Little Caesars mm -hmm. was in 2000 and six or seven wow. in LA, uh, me and my friends were like, Little Caesars, remember that? It was like in Kmart yeah. all the time. It was very yeah. 80s. Yes, yeah. it was in Kmart. And I had nostalgia for it. So yeah. we're like, let's go get Little Caesars. So me and my friend Jared and my friend Drew 
all went and we each got our each our own stu- little Caesar's pizza. Yeah, yeah. It tasted amazing. Yeah. Oh. I loved it. And no joke, like 15 minutes later, we all had crazy diarrhea. Like cramps. <laughs> That's it was, part of it. It hurt oh. so bad. Twisting cramps. It was really greasy. I remember that. And I haven't had it since. I'm oh, afraid they gave you uh, the Brutus special. So I used to work at a pizza place and when they washed the trays. Yeah, you talked about when this. When they washed the you trays have. that they cooked the pizza on, they just dip them in sanitizer and then they rinse them off. Yeah. At but, Little Caesars. No, yeah. I, I worked at, uh, at can I say? Any, I worked at PJ's, yeah. Papa John's. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. But if you don't uh, rinse off the trays, if there's yeah. still sanitizer residue, it bakes into the pizza and it uh, gives you wicked diarrhea. Every oh, once in wow. a blue moon, Derek, I think about that, Derek, that, that story all the time because every once in a blue moon, I will have, I, I'm pretty lucky with food. I don't have things that upset, upset mm. my stomach, dairy doesn't, but nothing bothers me. Every now and then I'll have a slice of pizza and uh, something will happen like yeah. that. And I know uh, what it, as soon as I'm done, I'm like, I know what it is. They didn't rinse the thing. Yeah. Derek has told me all I used to prank people at my store because we would drink sodas and they if you left a soda out, I would take it over to the sanitizer and be like, Psh, give you a little shot in there and then yeah. put it back. No. And then people oh would like drink, God. drink their soda and be like, ugh. I was, you know, I was still a teenager at the time. It wasn't a customer. It was a fellow employee. Yeah, these are fellow employees. The customers got it just naturally from the dirty pizza (laughs) trays. I didn't have to give them anymore. From our dirty fingers. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that's what I'd be more afraid of. I'd be more afraid it was like E. coli from the uh, person baking my pizza, not wiping properly. I can't speak to that. You know, know, maybe. Who knows? I will try it, though. I'll try it. It'll do it on stream. I'll do it. I'll it's have good. Little Caesars okay. and I'll title st- it. Rocco made me do this. If I get yes. diarrhea, I'm mailing him the diarrhea. Stuffed. <laughs> it's you got to get it's it's pretzel crust, but the stuffed pretzel crust. That's crazy. They, it's it's the is it like a soft. Pretzel? There's no marinara either. It's they use nacho they, cheese. It's not nacho cheese. It's oh, it's, it's a that's different a hard it's fancier sauce. name for it. But it looks Sorry, like it's nacho a cheese. cheese. Hey, substance. people yeah. in the chat are calling me calling me the poisoner. That's not cool. All right, it's not. It's not. That's not cool. His prank was cool. It's a prank. The prank was cool. We were talking about it was the 90s, okay? People were more mean it, it back was then. Wild it's west. a funny stunt. This is the era you put laxatives in the brownies, yeah. you put a little sanitizer in the soda. Yeah. It was a thing. Zoomers, okay? Yeah. Zoomers, a prank now for a Zoomer is you compliment someone and you donate money to their bank account and don't tell them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or you're, you're selling you clean them. up some trash somewhere in their honor. I know. You, you change somebody's <laughs> Wi Fi password that's too mean for these Zoomers. You plant a tree. <laughs> Mr. Beast pranked everyone so hard. The past yeah. three years. <laughs> by planting all those trees. He's the best at pranking. Uh, <laughs> but speaking of Creator Clash, you yeah. had a whole entourage with you mm-hmm. and oh, were yeah. also part of an entourage. Uh, John Morrison, mm-hmm, the mm-hmm. professional wrestler. Oh, yeah. And you called out uh, WWE and Seth Rollins. Yep, yep. And uh, how is your uh, professional wrestling career going? Uh, it is. It, it's uh, There's things I can't say. Uh, some things I've talked to you guys about these guys, if you're interested in wrestling and me and these guys, keep your eyes peeled. Um, these guys are getting involved in something here. Uh, that's all I'll say. But for me, the things that, you know, the world doesn't know is it's nothing has really happened yet, but I am talking to people behind the scenes and working on something pretty big Mm -hmm. to hopefully pull off. And, uh, I think it will happen, but there will be wrestling from me this summer. Uh, I won't say too much, but. I'll say this. Harley, who fought John yep. okay. um, at Creator Clash, did something pretty lousy after Creator Clash. Harley, I don't approve of what you did. John was in a wrestling match. I think it was in Chicago. And he was about to win. And then Harley shows up, gets in the ring, yeah. and choke slams. Interferes? John he interfered. Bullshit. In John's match. John is a legend. He was about to win. And then Harley t- takes that from him. So Harley, not cool, dude. Yeah. You saw what I've done two years in a row. John and I are coming for you. Harley now has to find someone to go against me and John, and he's going to have a hard time finding anyone who can combat the victories we're pulling. Oh, yeah. So big mistake, Harley. Big mistake. So there's bad blood there. Yeah. Uh. Harley. It's not over. I got a six foot seven friend. So even if I can't get done, Big Bob, he'll be in my corner way towering over Harley. Yeah. So this summer, everybody stay tuned. Creator Clash is turning into Creator Rash. 
Yeah. I don't know. I got nothing. Rash, Wrestle, I was thinking yeah. wrestling and clash together is rash. So right. I don't know. That's I, good enough. Yeah. We're, we're, we're workshopping it still. Yeah. yeah. We're workshopping it. just, so whenever I might need you guys in my corner. That doesn't make sense. It's always followed up with, ah, I've been hitting the head a lot with chairs. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me yeah, a break yeah. here. We took too many bumps uh, before the podcast today. It's mm -hmm. uh, it's funny that you, the way you worded that reminded me, uh, you know, because my, my favorite type of video is when you do something, at least like when you do something out in public. I always like stuff where it's like, I'm doing the most innocuous nothing thing, not bothering anybody, but like the ma the, min the most minimal thing you could do to the most maximum, like socially people can't handle it. And it's sure. like, why is this bother you? What What's yeah. the big deal? And for me, that video of yours is, I've always loved underrated video is you just going, Psh. Oh, with the bass master. Yeah. There's a video yeah. where he's just walking down the street. He just looks at people and goes. <laughs> that is my sense of humor. And exactly. That was my kind of video too. And uh, and you just doing that and people can't handle it. It's like, what? Yeah. That what, video, what, what? <laughs> that's Ed Bassmaster's idea. And he brought oh. me into it. Oh, Ed okay. Bassmaster, I'm sure a lot of people know, is a legend. A man who's always doing a bit when the cameras aren't rolling. He and I be like at the store oh. and he's doing a whole routine with the cashier clerk. And I'm like, oh my God, he's just going, he's just doing like this voice. And he, I'm like, he's just always pranking people constantly. It's just yeah. how he is. He came up with the psh bit, but he does it so good. It's so subtle way he does it. It's just, you can almost <laughs> not even hear it. You can bar you barely hear yeah. it. And so when he brought That's me in, good. He's like, he's like, we should do it together. And I was like, oh, I want to be someone like, you know, because he does his ugly character. So I did my comb over guy. Uh, Cam Ping is his name. Camping is his full name. Oh. Um, <laughs> Cam Ping, who is supposed to be like a super hipster. Yeah, yeah. But he's like so, so hipster. He's just, I look homeless almost and crazy. Yeah, yeah, Big yeah. tiger shirt. He's got a I super comb I can picture over. exactly. Yeah. That character going, psh, I did my, psh, he, he really trained me. I did him too big. I'd be like, psh. it's not as funny, I learned. Yeah. Unless you, if you do it super subtle, like, yeah, <laughs> and just roll your eyes. It, yeah. it gets, the people get so offended because they feel yeah. like they caught you doing like, something. Excuse yeah. me, what? Yeah. What's? What am I doing what that you, you don't like? Of? <laughs> and he did, and that's so and vague. That's what I it's so vague. But that's my favorite type of video concept. Is like I said, the most minimal effort nothing ego. thing yeah versus With the, the biggest deal. outrage like why yeah why would you do that and it's like i'm just making a sound you're dis myself. it's a disapproval you know? of something that and people don't like that you are yeah disapproving the, of whatever they saw the thing we filmed that for whatever reason pissed people the most uh pissed them off the most was we went to a, like a subway or a sandwich shop and Rocco sat down and took his shoes off. Yeah. In the just socks. He, yeah. In socks. He sat yeah, on yeah. the floor and took his shoes off and just sat there in his socks like playing with a toy and the fact that he was oh. like treating it like his living room they were like losing their shit. I wow. think it was now this is this is my theory on the psychology. If I had been barefoot people wouldn't have been as mad because then it's then there's something going on like maybe yeah. he lost his shoes maybe but something socks happened. Socks is weird. But yeah. socks, it's it's a level of comfort. That's an intentional thing, uh -huh. and you're making this restaurant your living room. I'm gonna beat the shit out of you <laughs> yeah. if you keep doing it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's a Excuse very me. subtle thing. Can you put your shoes on? It please? was the so it was the weirdest funny. thing. We recorded that, and I left. We did it at a couple places, and I'm like, Derek, this is the maddest people have ever been at me. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just sitting here in my socks. <laughs> yeah. Like that's I'm not I'm not like going up to people or doing a weird thing. I'm just sitting here in my socks. Yeah. People are like, Ooh, why funny. are you here? Well, I could know. see people getting mad about shoes off because you know the toes are kind of can be gross and dirty. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, also, you don't want to see, see that. It. It's like, yeah. oh, beach yeah. person, like you just came from somewhere. Your shoes are exactly. It's more common having yeah. your shoes off. Or that. Right. Yeah. Oh man, that poor crazy dude is walking exactly. around you with no shoes. Like, like, yeah. Oh, I wonder yeah. where his yeah. shoes are. I think on. having exactly. the socks on was yeah. You're maintaining a level of comfort. <laughs> yes. Like, like you're privatizing this space for yeah. yourself. And mm -hmm. that's when they feel angry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> this, isn't, sure. this isn't your space to kick your shoes off. Yeah, yeah if it yeah. can't be mine, it can't be yours. <laughs> exactly. it's shared space. Oh man, people were like losing it. I was like, oh, I wasn't, I thought I'd just get a fun, funny kind of, oh, why is that guy doing that? And instead it was like, uh, like war veterans, like, oh, oh, uh, uh, let me at this guy. It was like, oh, I'm, so I'm sorry. So let me ask you, what do you consider yourself officially? Are you an actor? Are you an entertainer? Are you a performance artist? Is I always, I always said actor. I guess I I have boxed. Mm -hmm. I, I did say boxer for a long time. I was like, well, if anyone's boxing, even if you're just taking classes, you're still a boxer because you are boxing. Yeah. You're allowed to say it. You're doing the act. Because when you say like Mike Tyson, you, say, you, you would say he's been a boxer for 40 years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Part of that 40 years is his first day. So that sure. means you are now saying he is a boxer because there was a big debate with people on Twitter, which I've now gotten off of. I went on for you guys to retweet this. Oh, thanks. I don't. Oh, I've been trying to get off Twitter for years, <laughs> but anyways, Twitter, 
during all the career clashes, people, uh, everyone knows everything. I even see this, uh, some probably the same people in comments of Mike Tyson YouTube videos saying what he did wrong. It's like, who the heck are you people? <laughs> Armchair anyways, quarterback. People many times told me you're not a boxer. It's like, well, I'm doing boxing. Isn't You've had that sanctioned it? fights. A gardener might be yeah. bad at gardening, but they're still doing gardening. Yeah. Therefore, a gardener. <laughs> Even if you yeah. only garden once a year. Yeah, or I mean, still you gardening. Garden. An athletic commission had to approve and, you know, be in control of your yeah. exhibition. Yeah. And you boxed competitively. And I like, definitely yeah. trained. Training and all that. My yeah. coach definitely, like, we trained. Like, he says, this, we're doing a pro, a, pro, a pro training camp. Like, you're trained like a pro. You eat, sleep, live, training. That's all you do. And that's all I did. For both years. So wow. I think, okay, I can say, because my coach who's a professional boxer yep. said I did it. So I guess I'll say I'm a boxer. What was your training? So, <laughs> but I wouldn't say to answer the question that I am okay. a boxer. And I want to be like, can I do everything? I always just consider myself, I'm an actor because I started out acting. I like acting yeah. and playing characters. Keith, and I, it's still acting. But mm -hmm. in doing my acting, I've gone into different avenues where it's like, I do some prank stuff. I do weird art installment things. I do live streams. I do boxing. It's sort of in character. It's all entertainment. Yeah. But the thing I like the most, the reason I say actors, because that's what I like the most, is like, if I could only pick one thing, I would pick showing up every day to either a television show or a movie set and just acting and performing. Don't write, don't produce, don't direct, don't do anything, don't make yeah. the music. Don't edit. I can't wait to stop editing someday. But <laughs> I, my dream is to yeah. like finish this movie that I started, Neutral, and like that's my main love is just performing and acting. Yeah, yeah. and I, all of this is sort of that. It's just you know different versions. So that, I say an actor, but now I guess I box as well. But who knows how well you be the judge? It's all the other you know actor pretty, as pretty the main well, gig, huh? and then all oh, the yeah, rest are yeah. hobbies or yeah spinoffs it's all dancing it, i've know. now come to the like, i'm 42 and like i do feel like now i'm like kind of looking at everything differently without harsh labels and like not overthinking things i used to like really categorize myself i never wanted to be called a youtuber i didn't like the uh, word uh, youtuber uh, because for so long youtuber was I like frowned upon i get that it's like and i wouldn't get yeah. auditions for things yeah. i wanted because my agent would be like oh they're really popular he's really popular on youtube and they'd be like oh we don't want youtubers and i'm like but i'm like don't say that agent yeah <laughs> you're screwing me because i was acting before there was ever youtube and now i'm just doing it because i have ideas and this is where i just dump things so i never i was against youtuber for a long time but now i'm kind of like i don't care about any label I just feel I'm just a human being who likes to create. And that's, yeah. it sounds so silly and vague and hippie like, but it kind of is what it is. You know? Yeah. I don't know about you guys. I consider myself an entertainer because even though we yeah. start, we met in theater and we do a lot of acting. We do a lot of things that is not acting. True. So, yeah. E even though like we are in character, where we go out in public and mess with people. Like sometimes that character is wearing a Tetris block or being yeah. Luigi in a shoe. I was like, this is if a really camera's acting. on. Even right now, you're sort of in character oh, in a way because 100%. you oh, yeah. are performing. This is pretty casual. This is pretty much what we were signing yeah. like, if not exactly when the cameras were off. But you, knowing there's a lens on you, you do sort of change. Yeah, a you put bit. something you on. Yeah. For yeah. Sure. yeah, you're it's projecting a your voice yeah, yeah, yeah. differently. It's like, a yeah, sure. everybody. So yeah. Yeah. But, but then yeah. also being behind the camera, like you said, filming, editing, writing, like so much goes into what we produce. And at the end of the day, I just feel like, well, it's all just made to entertain people. Yeah. So I guess that makes me. An That's a good catch all. Yeah. yeah. Entertainer. It's there's like so many things. A good umbrella, I guess. So uh, take us back. I, I'm interested in like how uh, like a little bit of your history, like how long you've been doing what you've been doing uh, professionally, I uh, suppose. Uh, well, since I can remember, I, the first time I ever like started performing, I guess, was, I mean, if I'm getting incredibly full, going far back, my dad borrowed a VHS camera in the 80s from a, f a friend. Okay. And one day he filmed for like 24 hours and I was constantly on lines. I was like hamming it up, doing crazy oh, things. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then <laughs> Wait, your later, dad did the original 24-hour basically he content just, featuring you? He, <laughs> featuring all of us. He was filming the whole family. The whole and like me and the, but my mom was at work. It was a camera that my mom was a waitress and she got... We borrowed her friend's camera from that restaurant. And my dad's like, I mean, my dad built us a very elaborate tree fort and like up in the trees with zip lines and trap doors. And wow. he's a carpenter and he like God, made this crazy tree dream. fort, which I now want to get my own house hopefully next year if I keep saving and I'll yeah. have my dad help me make the, it's like the Ewok network of trees. That's like basically what I'm trying to do. Yeah. Uh, so my dad filmed us on that tree fort. He filmed us using it, doing the zip line, just kind of you know, so we have some memories because we didn't own a camera. So he's like, I'm going to film as much as I can to get as many memories on camera. Before as we you can. have to give the camera Before back. Before I have to give it oh, back. That makes sense. So that's why he was yeah. filming like for 24 hours, just everything. And <laughs> I was always doing something. And I had a lot of energy and I still do. And then in high school, 
I had a cable. I was in a cable access uh, class. Okay. And I could oh. also borrow those cameras in the, from the studio and film after school. And we'd film sketches, edit the sketches in the studio, and then air them on cable access every week in the town in Medway, Massachusetts. So oh. we could broadcast it to awesome. the whole town. If they watched Channel 3 on basic cable, they'd see us at 8 o'clock. And our sketch show was called The Sweet Ride. My brother created the show, my older brother. And then when me and my younger brother took over, when he graduated, we changed it to the Elastic Sheep Farm, where it started getting a little more weird and we started mm -hmm. like getting a little more crazy. Uh, that was another sketch show. So since high school, I've been filming. I never stopped after that. I had my own cameras, VHSC, Hi8. I've yes. done it. I haven't stopped filming since, I guess, 12 or 13 years old. Yeah. I'm 42 now, so 30 years basically yeah, I've been yeah. doing this. So you're on public and, access, and yeah. in between public access and uh, what YouTube came around, where would this content go? So after high school, um, we still kept filming sketches, me and my brother. We had a DVD we put out called Life on Fruit Street that we just basically gave to our friends. Dude, and, uh, this is uh, so similar to how I, I Mega64 started in cable access, yeah. gave out DVDs. We started a public yeah. access show <laughs> that we released on DVD oh, just wow. amongst yeah. our friends. Yeah, the yeah, same exact thing. I've just been going just keep filming and making stuff. And it's basically me and my brother, Seth, who lives with me in California now. We've done everything together. Uh, and then other friends coming in and out. Some friends that moved out to California. This was in Massachusetts. I moved to California in 2005 where I was filming sketches the whole time then. And then I brought the VHS and DVDs with me to California. That's how I got my agent in 2005 or six, first mm -hmm. year. Okay, wow. I actually got pulled over for riding my BMX bicycle at midnight through a red light in Santa Monica. There was no cars around oh, at all. And a cop gave you a ticket? A cop gave me a ticket. I was, oh. I was coming back from the promenade from Urban Outfitters. I worked at Urban Outfitters. I was riding home and I was like, I'm just going to go because there's no cars and it's midnight. Yeah, yeah, and so yeah. a cop saw me, pulled me over and I didn't have money to pay for the ticket. So I went to community service and in doing oh. community service, I chose, I could pick what I wanted. I went to a theater in Santa Monica and helped them just clean up every day and that guy that ran the theater said oh i know an agent you're like really funny you should like have an agent i was like i'd love to have an agent so i met with this agent <laughs> i got an agent and that's how i've done like all the commercials you've ever seen me in are from this guy and uh that started my sort of wow. california i was still filming sketches youtube came around we started putting on the old vhs dvds on youtube mm -hmm. and uh in 2006 second year of youtube or first like nine months into it yeah. i had a viral hit it had 300 000 oh. views like Ooh. first year youtube wow because they featured it was nothing from the feature so well, they featured the video the video of me on a pogo stick which is taken from a short yeah. film that oh, me and my brothers made yeah. in massachusetts it was basically like i took this short film that like made no sense to people who didn't really know me and the character and I yeah. didn't want to put 20 minutes on the internet. So I broke up little scenes as sketches and there was a, there's a flashback scene where I'm on a pogo stick and I'm just bouncing in a really weird way. Yeah. And my brother's like, got a stopwatch and he's like looking at me. <laughs> and then eventually I tip over, he stops the stopwatch, shakes his head. I get mad because I clearly didn't beat my record I was trying to go for. <laughs> and he throws the pogo stick and it hits a guy in the face. And that was it. It was this stupid sketch that was huh, real quick. Huh. It got featured. Then I was like, YouTube's everything. So yeah. I started putting everything on YouTube, filming more and more on YouTube. And uh, I haven't stopped. So, but that agent who I had during the pandemic <clears throat> skipped town after like 12 years of being with me and all these other okay. actors and he stole $10,000 from me and I found out I had this big SAG Screen Actors Guild meeting with him and all these other people, all these other actors and we found out that he stole like hundreds of thousands of dollars from all these actors and, oh, no, one, shit. and no one knows where he is now. But uh, to this day, still missing. Still missing. OK. And there's a chili commercial that's been airing that I've been doing. That was I did it a couple years ago when he skipped town. That's still airing. And some oh. of people here have told me they see it. Apparently recently it played. And I'm hoping to get a couple more checks from this. Yeah. But, uh, a Chili's commercial. A, a Chili. Hormel Chili. Oh, commercial. oh Hormel. Chili. Yeah. Good Fatal. Stuff. You guys know Fatal Farm? Yeah. 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 Fatal Farm directed it. Zach oh, from Fatal oh, Farm okay. directed it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they do a lot. Fatal Farm guys. They do a lot of commercials. So uh, just just a quick detour on them. They were, a, uh, I think. Yeah. Uh, it, they were a guest at Game Days one year too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, I think I was there that was year. It, what, oh, okay. Same year you were there? When yes, yes, I think okay. I was. Or maybe it was after. I remember maybe. watching that. Yeah. Okay. I did put up the video. I think it's on our Patreon. Yeah, Fatal Farm's they, awesome. Just totally. like you, they they put um so much effort into their panel because we all we were just like I always feel bad. I'm kind of like asking, like, you know, uh, you want to come to our thing? Uh, you know, like, yeah, yeah. like you're going out of your just way show to up do something. And say something. Yeah, and they yeah. came with like props and a whole presentation and yeah. all it was like oh my god you put so much work into this and they were like well we no one has asked us to do this it was like oh okay that surprises me yeah but uh they are among my favorite 
things I've ever discovered through the internet, mm-hmm. you know, and, and the, both of the guys, they're are really nice guys yeah. too. So they're, really they're, cool. they're great. Yeah. I love them. Um, but anyway, so, so they did the chili commercial. I didn't know they that. directed. Well, normally they direct together, but sometimes they'll just do one or the other. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Jeffrey and Zach. Uh, I met Jeffrey originally because uh, this girl uh, the I dated Siobhan, she worked for Adult Swim and she uh, got all these new directors that she'd yeah. find cool people doing cool things and got them involved in Adult Swim. That's how I got involved in Adult Swim. She was oh. producing. Adult Swim wanted to use Keith Abacare. We had a pilot with Adult Swim that year. Yeah, wasn't it? And was it Youth Large? Youth Large was, was, was the pilot. Called? Right. Yeah, I remember that. But since then, uh, I've done like 100 for commercials for Adult Swim. Oh. And uh, Siobhan was who introduced me to them because she would use them to direct other spots and some oh. of my other friends and stuff. Yeah. So then we became friends. Yeah. And I was like, oh, you guys make weird stuff too. Cool. So now I you know, know about them. And Lasagna Cat, I actually, there's a little thing I did. Lasagna Cat is the dad series is a kind of like cryptic, weird series yeah. on YouTube. Lasagna Cat is a thing that they did. This very similar fan base watched Lasagna Cat. Yeah. And knowing that, I did, I posted a picture one time that I only make three fans notice. I took, I was at a party with them and yeah. then dad posted this picture at this party. And in it, you can see that it's uh, Jeffrey from Fatal Farm. Yeah, and yeah. It made the whole like the Reddit at the time uh, and the Discord went crazy. We're like lasagna cat and dad have it's come kidding. together. Oh. And ever since, I've been wanting to do this really weird video where like it's a hard com- and also they they commented on one of the dad videos and I pinned it at the top. Oh. And the internet lost their minds again. So I've been wanting so long to do a, a Fatal Farm dad collab yeah, yeah. to make the all like the, the ARG fans like. Yeah. Go splooge. They're within the same universe. I was just going to say, though, uh, something that we have joked about on our podcast multiple times. I just made the connection. You talked about you did a lot of different things for Adult Swim and different Mm. promos and stuff. There is uh, one show where we thought the sorry, but I'm not nothing against anyone who worked on it, but. We thought it was the worst title for a show we'd ever heard in our lives. And oh, we, I know always it. Jo- we always yeah. joke about Brad Neely's Harg Nolan Sclopio Pipio. Yeah. I and then suddenly oh. I remembered <laughs> I remembered seeing you. You you recreated like the opening to it. Or, yeah, right? yeah. You did so that. Apparently, I think Brad wanted me in that. Cause I guess oh, he wow. I've never met the guy, but I think he knew of me. Yeah. Maybe because I'm in like all of their commercials, like, oh, get that guy. He's, oh, he, okay, he's down okay. to do whatever. Yeah. But I remember saying they had a sc- sc- Glolio Pipio. It was really hard to say. I was like, what does this mean? Yeah. I don't disagree with you. It is kind of weird. <laughs> yeah. But also, maybe that's what he was trying to do. The original title for, sure. for the show was TV Sucks. That's a good title. That's a yes. good title. But I then like we that. kept going, you, hey, you want to catch a new episode of Brad Neely's Harg Nolan Sclopio Pipio? And before you could even finish the words, you, people would be like, no, fuck that. No. I guess you just shortened it to like Brad Neely's new show. Which is even still kind of a mouthful. I know that Lazo. What, what is his new? Did he have a new show? Well, he did a couple things with them. I oh, think. Okay, I think okay. he had another thing before that. Maybe didn't make it. Maybe it was a pilot. But I know that Lazo, the guy who yeah, was the head of yeah. Adult Swim, like loved him. Yeah. And was like, do oh, whatever I, you want. I, I, yeah. No diss so, on him. He's great. But. I think that he's like, I do whatever I want. And sometimes when you're giving full permission, you just kind of go off the rails. Which you see know, how yeah, much you can get away with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I mean. I'll never say, you know, any creative ideas like, well, if it makes sense to you, that's cool. But I don't have to love it, I guess. So, but I think the show was a good show, but I do agree. Yeah, the I t- saw the some funny stuff from it. TV no, sucks would have been a cool. Thing. Yeah, that's a good title. The, Memorable. You know, no offense. Yeah. No offense to anyone sense. over there. But, but yeah. apparently, I, I don't know all of Brad's stuff, but apparently he's like a genius with like most of it. So I just, yeah. I know that cartoon mm-hmm. and I have heard of him because yeah. he's in that adult swim circle. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a lot of people that like, were in there like I was pitching them so many shows and then you hear like oh we're doing another thing another thing with Brad oh we're doing another thing with Nathan and so and so like there's a lot of people that are always just kind of they're cooking yeah. with and they're working with yeah. and like my stuff never went through I had like so many deals with them of like different shows wow, no kidding. Youth Large was the only one that actually got shot oh, and I had a yeah. lot of scripts with them and Youth Large they let us normally they don't let you release it it's like no one would have even seen Youth Large yeah but I was they like can I please let us put oh, it and they, cool. they said yeah you can load it as a video whatever wow so that was cool most networks. I've done so many scripts with Comedy Central, Adult Swim, uh, Fox, and none of them have ever been seen. And it's like a two Shelfed years of my out. life just gone. Shelved it. But yeah, Adult Swim sucks. was allowed to be put out. Luckily. Yeah. So I had another show that I wrote after that for Adult Swim. It was me and you know Josh Fadum. He's a oh, he's really? a Why do I he's in Better Call Saul as the camera yeah. guy, the director, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. the yes, camera yes, guy. Yes. He's in yeah, a lot of guy. stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he's a short guy with like dark hair, kind of long. Sometimes he does a lot of physical. He's a UCB comedian. guy. Right? He's UCB. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I okay. met him at the Upright Citizens Brigade. Josh and I had a show because Lazo said to me, this is the guy who used to run Adult Swim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's Walter who was there be- with Lazo. Oh, Walter okay. took over and okay. is the head. 
Lazo was like, I want to do a new Three Stooges, Three Stooges, and you need to do it. Oh my god! So as like a <laughs> modern so Three Stooges, I went to Atlanta and had a meeting with him about like, what do you want? And he said, This is what I want. You and Josh Fadum, Three Stooges, and do it however you would want. And yeah. so I wrote a script. They they got pitch and they approved it. I wrote the script. They gave me notes. Kept changing it. And the concept, I still love the concept. And I still like to do this someday. It was basically, we're two repair guys, handy men. And we work for this company of like super masculine handy guys that can do anything. And I, we hire like, I wanted to get a lot of WWE wrestlers like John oh, yeah, yeah. Morrison and Dolph Ziggler and people yeah, that I knew yeah. that would be like, they're the strapping, attractive handyman. Oh, this, someone needs to have a door installed. They throw it at the wall and they boom, 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 the nails just hit the wall and say, like, boom, there's a door. And <laughs> we are the two guys that got hired through nepotism. Me and Josh are like, oh, we're like the brothers of the guy that owns the company. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, his, yeah, his yeah. dad who started it is like, you gotta give your brother a job and his stupid cousin. So they don't want to because we can't do anything. And we just, we literally, our job is in the pilot to so go change a light bulb in this house and we destroy this woman's house because we can't get it done. So basically the, the competition of like between, comparison between me and these muscle men and not being able to do anything. It was basically just leads to physical comedy. So yeah, going on yeah. all these jobs. And it was called Handyman, Handyman Co. or something. I can't remember. And it can do, can do Man Co. Can do Man, it, Man, can do Man, Man Co. Man is the Man name, what I was calling the company. <laughs> anyway, I think that's a good idea because I just basically want someone to be like, roll a camera and I'll just do a hundred physical comedy bits <laughs> and <laughs> ma- edit it into something. Wait, so what happened with it? They approved it? Uh, or it, got, it never got, got canned, it got canned after like three rewrites. They were like, yeah. And I thought, I was like, nah, we're not going to do it. And I was like, okay. So they paid me to write, but now that I can't do anything with it because they own that idea. It's, Unless yeah. I change, yeah. I can change it enough and to like rework it into something else, I guess, and then do it later somewhere yeah. else. But like, it's just annoying because you're so close. And it's like, this is the only network that would do a weird show like this. Like, where yeah. else am I gonna go with this? Yeah. Oh, it's disheartening. I, I've always had a dream of doing, uh, I love Laverne, Laverne and Shirley. I think it's like okay. a very okay. underrated, like it's funny. Yeah. I watched it like <laughs> Squeaky six, and uh, I, I watched that show like Lenny and Squeaky. Lenny and Squeaky next yeah. door, yeah, yeah. And the, the two <laughs> women uh, in Sh- Shirley, uh, Shirley, uh, what's her name? Uh, Michelle was her name? I can't remember the actress's name. The dark haired one. She just passed away, I think, recently. Yeah. Um, yeah, which is sad. yeah, yeah. That I was so impressed when I watched the show. I was like, these ladies are throwing themselves around. There was a bit where she like literally threw herself on the ground. I was like, how did she take that bump? Like that was crazy. <laughs> they, like they really threw themselves around, and I was like, this is super funny. So I got super into Laverne and Shirley. Yeah. And ever since I saw that, I was like, I want to do a show that's like a modern Laverne and Shirley, where I'm, me and my wife are just destroying each other. Like she <laughs> accidentally like kicks me out a door in a, a five story window, and I get land on a car. Like next level physical comedy. Yeah. But like have the it's like the two most clumsy couple in the world, and have it be a man and woman, so it's not just a typical like two dumb dudes. Yeah, like, yeah, a, yeah. You know, a couple I think would be funny. And I thought it'd be kind of, I was thinking like, the, there's a girl, uh, Milana Weintrup. She, oh yeah, the, oh, yeah. the girl. great Malenko. Yes. Yeah, we know you her. know her? Yeah. The AT&T girl, she's in the dad series. Uh, yeah, yeah. I thought she would be a good wife for the series because uh, she kind of jumps around a good amount. She takes a Well, bumps. at least in some yeah. of the videos I've seen. But They she, don't use her to her potential in the AT&T mm. commercials. She can do more. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, but anyway. <laughs> Live Prude Girls was where it was at though. Yeah. Yeah, we did an episode of that with them. What was it? Live Prude Girls. They, I mean, on, they started on, That was on her channel. That was the YouTube. Yeah, It yeah. was like a comedy interview show. Oh, I don't think I've ever seen that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was good. Yeah, Super awkward. She did awkward. that with her friend. Yeah, it was like uh, just awkward interviews. On yeah. That oh, that's cool. Yeah. Oh, wow. Nice. I had to watch that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, with Adult Swim, we we had a... Uh, we we uh, tried to get a hold of them a few times and send them a, you know, mm-hmm. sizzle reel of our stuff and... You, know, you guys would have fit right in, I think. Yeah, I, with them. Thank you, thank definitely. You. But uh, eventually, but we kept getting talked about uh, the the Turner used to own Game Tap, which was their gaming related oh, I mm-hmm. thing, I and so we had a few occasional talks with them, like eh, Adult Swim. Yeah, well, maybe if you do well on Game Tap uh-huh. first, yeah, then it like, could. Oh, it uh, was like okay. Well, I don't know how how well is Game Tap itself doing. Like, but they I, at one point they had new Space Ghost episodes on that. Oh, like really? it was kind of like if we're not sure about Adult Swim, oh, maybe they're we'll testing, put it on that. testing. Yeah, they there. tried yeah. to do video stuff, and uh, we did some that, commercials for Game Tap. Well, yeah. So at first they asked us to do videos, but then yeah, the ownership was like uh, you'll never own. You'll never. I, I don't know. Yeah. There was something weird about it where it was like yeah maybe not 
Uh, but then, yeah, later down the road, it was like, oh, do commercials for it, though, and mm -hmm. that'll air on Adult Swim. And it was like, okay, so that sounds worth it. Yeah, to weigh in. That's, yeah. That's what I did a lot of. Was totally. Just a lot of the bumpers. Yeah. And uh, then the, the ads. Yeah. Bumpers, like, they you know, the classic Adult Swim, like, brackets. Yep. Yeah. Sometimes for their bumpers, they would do, like, a, they, I did a whole shoot one time where it was, like, just the stunt day with yeah. me and my brother and my friend Bob, that tall guy from Critic Clash. Yeah. It was just us as the bad guys getting beaten up by this like little Indian man. And they just, it was a whole day shoot. Of, like, it was just, <laughs> just non sequitur. <laughs> well, five bumpers. And we were like getting thrown into bo cardboard boxes yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. And it was just to have like five, like, you know, five second bumper from Adult Swim. Well, that's so like, I'll do anything you guys want as long as I get my show eventually. That's what I kept thinking in my head. And it got me close, but now yeah. I've sort of stopped pursuing because I'm like, this is just ridiculous. I'm just going to keep making my own stuff. And <laughs> yeah. Put, yeah. Well, we're kind of in the same boat. You yeah, know? Like, for real. We, we tried so much to get through the door in Hollywood that eventually it was like, maybe we should just create our own platform yeah. for well, stuff. And mm -hmm. also, the, the, it, well, so those things that we did, they did air on Adult Swim, but uh, it was a really weird experience for us because we, we were like, we're going to go so crazy with these. Yeah. Let's go all out to where when this airs on Adult Swim, people were like, what was that? Yeah, oh, my yeah, yeah. God. Who are those guys? And so we pitched them a ton of crazy ideas, but one of them was kind of low key. Mm -hmm. Like, like, you know, okay, here's one where like a, there's a, a clown attacks a bunch of hockey players, you know, like really crazy ones. Mm -hmm. And then we had one that was just like a guy in an office goes to show him the game tap website and accidentally touches his hand. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh -huh. like awkward and then they read that and they were like oh just do five more like that five it was of like, the awkward what? The little yeah just yeah, like yeah, an yeah. awkward moment at like an office or a funeral and it was like oh we we wanted to do so much more than that. we learned yeah, the lesson yeah. of don't pitch things you don't want to do yeah. because that'll be the thing that gets selected yeah, yeah. yeah. seriously yeah. We, yeah. well yeah. for sure and we were like man we can do so much more than this mm -hmm. nah that you do the first one then you start they let you just kind of go off and do your own thing it, well yeah it was yeah. Just, but so we did a few of them and it was just like man that's it huh it's just like don't oh don't talk about game tap at my baby shower uh, and that was it it was like uh, all right it's like kind of just like kind of right they're like you guys kind of suck it's like these are the bad ideas yeah we didn't yeah. want to do this these are the ones you like, wanted yeah uh, i've been told in their pitch meetings that they always get pitched so super crazy ideas so they probably heard everything and they're so desensitized now yeah yeah where they're like nothing's crazy anymore so the yeah. thing that is normal is actually funny Stands to them because they're like now they're just going back to the point where like you know, that's a lifetime commercial. That's yeah. like something like that would air it's on any network. Circle. Yeah. So now they're like the back world. to normal. <laughs> <It's>, normal <laughs> is weird for them because they've seen acid trip shows pitched <laughs> yeah, to them yeah. every day. Yeah. Uh, so you mentioned you've done a lot of stunts. What is the like biggest, most crazy, like Jackie Chan level stunt that you can remember? I'm curious hmm. if there's anyone that comes to mind. Well, and while you're thinking about it, let me just say, Sean, at any point that you're involved in anything, Sean, oh, yeah. Sean will get nervous. Like <gasps> there, he's in it. Oh wait, he's <laughs> boxing in the. Oh no, oh no, oh no. And it's like, what's wrong? And he's like, he always says this. He goes, I saw him at Screw Attack Gaming Convention, a small convention. Throw himself from a balcony and just <laughs> break his leg. If he's willing to do that, there, what's he gonna do with this thing? Yeah. He 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 goes too far. He goes too far. That Why does he go so in the far? room for that? That's his yeah, father we because he's a father. So yeah. he's yeah, you know he's. The caregiving yeah. is coming up. He gets yeah. nervous yeah. for people. So he always gets scared when, anyway, so that, yeah. that's for him. I know it's that. Yeah, he was, yeah. He was shattered by that. So was your leg. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I shattered my heel and I, the yeah, doctor actually made me feel cool. The doctor was like, it's the hardest bone to break. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> Accomplished. Uh, I did it. Uh. <laughs> you, you did the whole panel. You finished the panel yeah, yeah. after initially breaking your, your heel. Yeah. And That's then you amazing. went to the hospital. And, then went, yeah. I felt, and the reason I did that was because at PAX one year, yeah. I got kicked out of right during my panel, no, right before oh, my oh, panel. Right, oh, right, right. And I was like, I can never not do a performance again. I felt so guilty that me goofing people around the up. hallways, people were then couldn't see my panel. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, I was understand. like, this is horrible. So I was like, I'm not going home. I'm not going to the hospital. I'm doing the show. Then we'll go because they're all here right now. Yeah. yeah. But that was at the entrance of my show. I wanted the audience was like looking at the stage and I wanted to be like, what? Where did he come from? He <laughs> yeah. fell from the sky. Because this is the thing I used to do with the Upright Citizens Brigade, which was oh. a much smaller gap. And I'd land on this like flexible wooden stage yeah. from the rafters that are like, you know. Yeah, not, not too far. Like it was like 10 feet and I'd drop halfway, then drop, finish dropping. So I'd like kind of hang, drop. It was very easy to do. 
the screw attack I mentioned was 14 feet up. And uh, I, also, I leapt a little bit, so I probably oh. added a tiny oh. bit of height. Oh, and it was God. straight up concrete. Under carpet. So I oh. shattered my heel on impact. And oh I, was my like, God. I, got, I was like, uh oh, something's broken. This isn't good. I felt it instantly. Oh, stayed in character. I had stayed in character. I was like, whoops, oh well. And then I just, I was <laughs> hopped on one foot. Oh my God. For an hour, I was on stage on one foot, hopping up and down. I took the sock and shoe off at one point, too. And uh, you could see my Swelling. foot was oh so big. Yeah. And it was like dark black yeah. like dark black and blue oh. on the left side right where the heel was and i remember looking at this one girl with her i think it was i guessing it was boyfriend girlfriend probably like 18 years old yeah. and there was so much confusion on her face so i was like singing like this this girl was like <laughs> uncomfortable because <laughs> she didn't know what was happening uh, it was probably like someone was like oh my boyfriend says this guy's funny like what who, what is happening <laughs> yeah, right now? I'm scared. they didn't know there was a lot of confusion even the people that like i could tell like they were singing the lyrics were like Concerned for you. Yeah. Just stop, dude. Go. Yeah, go go to away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, was, it was a real weird crowd that year, but like there were people, I was, you know, I just didn't want to end. And it was a part of the bit where it keeps like, nothing stops me. I'm Rambo. Because yeah. <laughs> Keith has this thing where he thinks he is J Sylvester Stallone. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So anyways, yeah, I showered my heel and then I went to the hospital. I got stuck in Texas for a week because I had to take blood thinners before I got on the plane. Oh, oh, shit. And then I had oh, surgery God. and Delayed that was a metal plate then. in my foot. So that was crazy. But the, I think the most Jackie Chan thing I did, it isn't that impressive. But the strategic planning, I think, is what makes it sort of risky. There's a video as Keith wearing a virtual boy. It's from the virtual boy music video. Yeah. I'll okay. Put it, I'll put it in a couple I think of things. I, I'm wondering if I'm thinking of the same. Of what I feel like you've probably seen it. It's one of the bigger Keith music videos. It's a song about virtual boy. Yeah. 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 I'm in public knocking things over mannequins. Oh walking. yeah. That was, that was one of my favorite things. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I got hit by a couple cars, went to a convertible. That's with what it. I thought you were going to say is like something involving a car with that. N well, I've gone through many windshields and that isn't the craziest thing. I feel very comfortable with doing that. And it's kind of easy to get hit by a car if you just turn the right way. Your knees, you let it hit in the back so you don't break your, your knees. Your butt goes into the butt goes into it. Your knees are bending with the car. Okay. And it, it's fine. It's yeah, like, piece of cake. Okay. Honestly, I do think most people could do it. It's like not that big a deal. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll try later. Hey, but, write that into <laughs> a for the show. future yeah. video. For but you. I often then whack my head on the windshield and crack the windshield. It's easy to crack a windshield with your head. And you also, well, maybe it's me. I just never never feel anything after it's happened twice brody stevens <laughs> was the last person to hit me with a car and i cracked my own windshield when he was driving my car for, oh. for a keith WWE wait steven video. brody stevens steven brody stevens. r.i.p nope. man yeah. 818 till i die, die for oh, sure man. brody was a legend uh, i miss him a legend. lot uh, uh he hit me with the last car i got hit by it was my own car brody was driving you for got video. it so oh, that's great uh, <laughs> that I feel like anyone could get hit by a car. Okay. But well, hear that, that kids? <laughs> try it at home. No, wait, you're not supposed to say that. No, no. don't try this at home, guys. This is, try are, playing no, these are video Nathan's games. At these home. are Nathan's views. Do not reflect ours. <laughs> okay, try okay. getting hit by a car in GTA, is what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah in my Grand Theft Auto. I think they're talking yeah. about IRL. Yeah. So, but, anyway, yeah. no one goes outside where there's cars. Uh, <laughs> the hardest thing, I, the most strategic thing I did was that I had to walk off a ledge. And into a dumpster with the virtual oh, boy on. Oh yeah! And it was oh. it was very tricky because I just can't see with the yeah. virtual boy. Well, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had to like walk to the edge and then know where I would step and see. You know, when you step off something, you continue to fall forward. Yeah, yeah. I had to know what my momentum would do. The dumpster was not very wide. So if I went too far, my chin would oh, hit. Yeah. If I didn't go far enough, my tailbone would hit or my just butt, and oh. I'd hit the back. So I was like, okay, let's do this. And it was and I did it because it was a dumpster I could move, put it in front of the specific building I wanted to walk off of. It was Sunday. There was no one around. I was like, we have to do this right now. <laughs> yeah. I have the chance uh. to do it. What other roof am I going to walk off of and fall into something and then disappear? The whole bit was like drop and disappear. And I had to like get to the edge, walk backwards in sort of a oh. stride I thought would be like not – I didn't want to look super cared uh, – uh, I didn't want it to look so choreographed, where it was like, I walked off and fell. It has to be like in the middle of the stride, I like drop if the ground falls up from beneath me. It has to look just right, because like, yeah. it looks set up and like, uh, not as impressive. Right. I was being very particular about this, and I had to put the virtual boy on my face where I could sort of look down at my cheek, but I just kept seeing my cheek get in the way and my nose was getting in the way, so I could sort of see out of my right eye, but also make it look oh. like I was looking forward. Yeah. And oh. we did it a couple times and they were so sketchy that doing it because i felt the dumpster like scrape the virtual boy i was like oh my god that's like an inch away oh, from my face wow. yeah and then i felt my shirt go up on one of them like the back of the dumpster oh. hit the back of my shirt 
I was oh. like, I gotta stop doing this. I gotta stop doing this. And then I did one. My friend That's Paul so was filming, and he was like, "That was it. It was good. It was just stop." So huh. that, was the, that was the sketchiest thing I think I ever did because it could have really messed me up. And uh, and, and falling into the trash, I just landed on trash bags and stuff. And that was like, you know, it wasn't that. It was. It was. That was the worst part. Was the edges of the dumpster. So yeah. That oh. isn't even that great of a thing. Like Jackie Chan has done so many crazy things. I wish I've done better things than that. <laughs> I had this bit I wanted to do actually for an Adult Swim bumper, and then it was actually going to become a that handyman show bit where mm -hmm. I want to be a human wrecking ball, either in a commercial <laughs> or or a, a show of some kind where I'm just knocking things off of a shelf. Like there's a some guy's got a wrecking ball and he's knocking like yeah. items off a grocery store shelf and I'm smashing the whole store to bits with my body. I'm just laying there limp, being banged into yeah. I think that would be Ragdolled. funny. They're it's, suspending yeah. you from like a I'm chain by my crane. ankles upside down by oh, some okay. sort of chain. They're just like bum, 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 knocking me and stuff. I think that would be funny. <laughs> and I've always wanted to do that. So that's something. It's not really Jack and Chan. It's pretty much just, just thrash me. It's pretty easy. <laughs> yeah. But there is a way to like, you know, your arm blocks your head at the right time. And, you know, you, yeah. don't, you, know, yeah. you just got to like sort of work it. I think that'd be funny. Jackie Chan would never try this one. No, it's too <laughs> reckless and dangerous. I mean, Jackie Chan has a whole stunt crew and safety team backed up. You've just got your friend filming you. Yeah, my brother off, and off the roof. we're also avoiding the police. Yeah. You yeah. know, I will say there's a well, actually, I'll say this. The most sketchy thing I ever did was I did a video called Driving Like Vince Diesel. Like where it's just Vin Diesel, oh, I don't you think know. I saw this. Uh -huh. this. It's age restricted on YouTube because oh, it was okay. too dangerous. Oh. It was pretty sketchy. This is the most dangerous thing I've ever done. Basically, I hang completely out of my car, so my head is dragging on the ground. And at the time, I had this, oh. I had this like bald mullet at the time, where there's a little rabbit tail in the back of my head. And like when, so I the could, hair. when I could feel that <laughs> scraping the ground, I knew that was as low as I should go. And sometimes yeah. my head would bump the ground. I'm driving on Santa Monica Boulevard <laughs> with my feet just jammed between the seat and the door. And like, like my feet are like bent like this, you know, to my, hold my, you in. My, yeah. my legs and then my knees are bending on the window where the window is down and I'm just literally hanging out. And how are you controlling the car? My brother is driving the car laid all the way back <laughs> where he, and he's like peeking up and we'd go like a block and then we'd get off block and we get off. He'd go like real slow. He's watching. He's driving really slow. My brother also drove the car in neutral, my short film where the car is driving yeah. itself. Oh, we yeah. did the same thing, but we actually that time we put a GoPro in the in the grill of the car and they had a monitor so he could drive with his head oh, that's on smart. shotgun Oh, that's floor, a great idea. And he was watching the monitor and then steering the car. Like but there game. was a little bit of a delay. Yeah. So the car would be going kind of like this. <laughs> <laughs> you correct, never noticed correct, in the movie. Correct, correct, And that's also, on, that was a manual car. So like it was trying not to get it stalled and his body would knock it out of gear when it would hit the shifter and stuff. That was a bit of yeah. a pain. But anyway, my brother Seth drove the car for the Vin <laughs> Diesel video and uh, my head was like near other cars, like driving past me. Oh. And I could have easily just fallen on the car and gotten run over. Yeah. Oh. So uh, I bring that up because I think like, you know, like you have like Vin Diesel and you have all these stunt people and Jackie Chan. They're on a film crew with insurance and money <laughs> yes. and like professionals. Yeah, yeah. And they have locked the whole set down. I'm literally risking my life <laughs> for a stupid internet video that my brother is filming and driving the car. And it's like, <laughs> I feel like I've had a harder experience living through like, you know, a film actor's career. Like I about <laughs> yeah. to say, I think I've done more physical comedy than Jim Carrey because of how I have to perform the physical comedy yeah. to get yeah. it captured. There's no safety. Yeah. He shows up for five minutes, wiggles around, boom, he's done. He goes, has a nice break in the back. I'm like out there avoiding the police, throwing myself in the street in front of the bus yeah. and yeah. then having to go get the footage, edit it. And anyway, so. There is such an element of like breaking through that it just comes down to luck Yo, and for randomness. Sure. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. you know you've done so much, and and people who've done way less have been recognized for what they've done. I know, but I guess people don't care about risking your life. It's like, well, we don't care, man. If it's not funny, it doesn't matter. <laughs> if you yeah. risk your life all you want, you're not going to get a TV show. <laughs> Did it make me good. laugh? <laughs> yeah. So you know, whatever. I'm not upset. I'm happy with everything that's happened, and uh, I like all the stuff I've made, but. It would be nice if I didn't have to film it all and edit it and then upload it and mm -hmm. beg people to watch it. You know, <laughs> if yeah. it just the network did it all, I'd be like, I just showed up and acted like a goof. And now, and there's an EMT I, on set yeah, in exactly. case something happens. I don't have to drive <laughs> myself to the hospital. Yes, <laughs> crapsy. So, so, well, one day, you know, it'll all pay off when you finally get recognized. Some, and some you could look back at this day. catalog and be like, go check out this old stuff that you've been ignoring for yeah, all these years. No problem. I mean, I'm happy. Even if it was all to be done right now, I'm like, well, it was fun. I had a good time. I, that's the thing I've let go of now that i'm in my 40s i mm -hmm. definitely had this like clearance or clear uh what's the word like uh clarity clarity is the word right. where i like and maybe it's like me 
I also wonder is oh, what I'm in my, am I re am I disguising or whatever? Am I tricking myself and saying, no, that's you giving up. Uh. You're just acting like your clarity because I do feel I am happy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I like what I've made. I don't have the urgency and the desire to be like, hustle, 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 hustle. Got to get out there, get to the audition. Also got to film this video. I got to do this boxing thing. I just, I kind of now just like enjoying life. That's and cool. I make stuff when I want to. And I will be doing on Twitch, Keith Abacary live in public. I think that's one thing I'll do on Twitch now that I'm like going hard with Twitch is I'm mm -hmm. going to go out with my peg leg Ray Amsley character, my Skittles character, Keith Abacary. Yeah. And I'm just going to go IRL with like my phone and have Keith be like interacting with people. That's a great idea. Edit the stream down into like a highlight and that will be the YouTube video for the future. Yeah. So I think like doing all the old characters people have been asking me to do, I was like, I'll just do it live on Twitch. Yeah. Then I'll have my Twitch going. I can also get yeah. it edited into a video. But in the in the meantime, the main goal is the movie, make neutral. Yeah. And yeah, you mentioned neutral and back. you had showed at game days. Oh yeah, you got your your audience. We were like, the first audience to ever see the the, the short, the short yeah. film yeah, for yeah. neutral. Thank you again for having me and Thank for, for letting me play out. that. I was wondering that when I did that with you guys, I was like, I don't know if this short film is like what a internet video game playing audience is going to want to watch. <laughs> but people came up to me after and were like, this was really cool. It was very unexpected. Yeah. So and it, I don't know if it was like, you know, they might have been expecting like more of an angry video game nerd type movie. Yeah. But it was not that at all. There was the composer of the movie is Shadru, a chiptune artist. Who I think what's it, what's the guy what's uh the guy who did the It Follows uh soundtrack oh that's um, a great soundtrack Danger Mouse I what's don't his know the name? name no not Danger yeah someone in the chat yeah I know what you're talking about who did the score of Sk It Follows Skiffle or something he now. he also did Disaster Fed. Piece he did Fed Disaster, Disaster Piece, piece. yeah, yeah. Disa Shadru in my opinion is another Disaster Piece he's a musical genius he's this like I met him when he was a kid he he made chip tunes I was a fan he did the oh. Neo Geo no that was uh, Phantom N K sorry too many chip tune artists but Shadru <laughs> has done a lot of my dad songs and some Keith stuff. Uh, Shadru did the Andrew WK song I did as Keith with Andrew WK. Shadru did the soundtrack to Neutral, which is the only thing, in my opinion, that tied it to a video game okay. convention oh. type meetup. So shout out to so Shadru. Check him out. Well, but Neutral was very different than anything I'd ever oh, done. Yeah. And I remember actually being nervous because uh, you talked about it and we were like, yeah, that'll be cool. Like, I like having all kinds of different stuff at our game mm. at our game days event. You know, it's like we have a panel by but Keith Abacare, we have a uh, Aquabats panel. We yeah, have Aquabats uh, and then, are cool. And then you had the thing to show. So it's like, yeah, now, now it's kind of a little film festival. Okay. Yeah, but, yeah. but, you know, we were so busy with the event. None of us ever screened it ahead of time. Because you yeah, sent yeah. it ahead of time. Like, hey, if you want to see it. Uh -huh. And it was like, we'll watch it there. Okay. Yeah, da, da, da. Yeah. And then the day came and it was like, wait, what is he going to show? I, you know, I, I had this <laughs> wash over me. Like, I do kind of. <clears throat> We do kind of have responsibility as the event runners here to mm. know what's about to. So for a minute, I was like, oh, what's that going to be? But yeah, it seemed like everyone was like, yeah, thought yeah. that was a really neat experience. So that was a totally. couple of years ago. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. So you're still developing it into a feature length film. Yeah. So I have the whole story. Mm -hmm. That's the first two twenty. That's the first 22 minutes of the film. Mm -hmm. That's like how it starts. It's shot. It's the first act. That's what we saw. That's yeah. shot. I'll, I'll change a couple of shots. The in very intro shot. I want to reshoot and do it differently. It's a very, it's a, we rented a phantom camera for the intro shot of neutral oh yeah it's, uh, yeah yeah that's cool. super slow-mo yeah. yeah me falling uh, into the sand and i don't like how i put my arm out i want to just hit the sand and like smash into it <laughs> so i want to redo that but other than that it's done yeah. and then you'll now see the rest of the movie okay but i need to do like an indiegogo at the end of this year and early into next year and i want to start filming it next year so part of the reason i'm streaming on twitch is like i'm trying to save everything i have to make a movie yeah and then do like an indiegogo and get it finished but it will be a full if i i have to make one movie in my life it just at least one yeah. i've done a lot of sketches short films and i just the whole goal has always been to make a film. And I'm like, why haven't I made a movie yet? This is like stupid that I haven't done this. I have friends yeah. winning Oscars now. And it's like, <laughs> okay, I'm really behind. I need to just make a movie and catch up here because it's it's all up to me, I feel. It's like I just keep getting sidetracked with so many things. So there's just too much to do yeah, on yeah. the internet and like things, so many ideas and things you want to make. So yeah, yeah. I'm going to force myself. I bought, I didn't, that orange car that's in neutral, I sold a couple years ago to make another short film because I don't have a lot of money. So I'm like, I just sell everything I own. So I sold yeah. every arcade game I owned to make neutral. Wow. And then I took the car from neutral, sold that to make a short film called Milford. And now I have nothing. <laughs> so I have no car, no video games. But I just recently last fall bought another one of those old BMWs from a friend. Oh, pretty good deal. It looks like crap. I'm getting it fixed up right now. I've been streaming that. 
to uh, as content just yeah. to like clean up the car. What now that I have the car, I've forced into making the movie. Cause Very I can't, nice. I'm like, well, it's an investment. I can't go back and it yeah. will make me. And I keep, the more I talk about it like this, the more it makes me like, everyone's heard me talk about now it. Now the yeah. You have to do yeah. it. So it has Committed. to happen. You gotta do so it. Who are you making neutral with? Your brother? Or uh, my brother, my brother and I actually, I, my brother is like a, my brother Seth is like a known, he's not known on the internet. Sort of my audience knows him and sees him around. Uh, he's in a bunch of sketches here and there. He's in, he's like this crazy looking guy. He looks like me, but he, act, he acts and looks a little crazier when he's in stuff. Um, he's like a director and an editor. He's like really good at directing. Yeah. Um, and I wanted, he does his own little shorts and stuff. And then we come together to do like the weird videos. He, I think I need him to like direct the movie with me. We directed oh, okay. this other short I did called Milford, like t together, even though he was more the director. Yeah. He like kind of took the reins because I was in it. So I'd like to work with him for sure on making, finishing neutral. And I'll have a lot of like just the actors that were already in it. Martin Starr, I want to come back. He's in Milford. Oh. A lot of the actors I've just worked with. I haven't seen this yeah. Milford. Yeah, I haven't Milford's, seen this. Milford's not a comedy, but there are some funny moments. It's about a guy who's just like, he always talks about leaving his small town in New England. Yeah. And he just never does. And then it's about him like making the decision of like, is he ever going to actually leave this small town huh. and do something? Because that's basically what I did. I was a grave digger in New England. I was always talking about going to California. I'm going to California. And if people were like, yeah, sure. You talk about it all the time. And then I finally and then went to California. Yeah. So people were like, oh, he did it. And I haven't gone back yet. So you worked at a cemetery? I you were in New I was a grave digger. I yeah, did not yeah. know that. I How wanted they... to do that so bad. I was such a little okay, fucking we're angsty gonna do another goth 45 kid. Minutes on this <laughs> I was job. I was such a little angsty goth kid in high school. And I was like, seriously, I was like, coroner? Mm, too much medical school. Oh, yeah. yeah. Grave digger. Yeah. Easy. No. Just gotta dig a hole. Yeah, you, I got a shovel. You, you just go out there with a shovel or <laughs> that's what I did. My I worked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, basically, I, there was. You didn't run the backhoe. I I never got to my boss. He okay. always did it because he didn't want to do any manual labor. He was like the old guy. Backhoe's easy. <laughs> it was the Dell Park Cemetery in Natick, Massachusetts. Hell Most yeah. of the time, I was cutting grass. When there were cremations, I would do that myself with an actual shovel, um, <laughs> and then you know fill it in. But wow. on the days where it was a full funeral with like a casket, we would dig the the grave a couple days before. Uh, and they are not six feet deep, at least in New England. Everyone says Interesting. six feet deep. In California, though, because I've done some live streams back when I was doing them on YouTube, I got in, I've gotten many graves. And in a video I did called Dead Man's Bones, a dance video as a, um, as a skeleton, <laughs> I got in a grave in Santa Monica, and they're like nine feet deep, like really deep. Whoa. Real deep. And like it's, oh. it's, I was in this nylon suit in the skeleton outfit, and I was like pushing against the dirt walls to like look like I was down there, and then I would pop up for the shot of the mm -hmm. videos doing, and I was sliding down the dirt. And I also had just broken my foot. It was oh, the first God. day I got the oh. cast off, and they're like, don't go crazy. Uh, so I went and shot a <laughs> dance course. video, uh. and I got in a grave with my break, broken ankle, broken foot, and I was pushing against this thing. I was thinking, oh my God, I'm not gonna be able to get out. I was literally sliding with this nylon full body. Oh, oh suit. yeah, morph suit. Morph yeah. suit, but yeah. it was a skeleton outfit. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and uh, I was like, oh my God, it was so deep. I wouldn't have been able to jump out because I broke a foot. Oh, so God. I learned that California digs them deep. And then on the live stream, I learned that again. I got in the, the open grave. I break into the cemetery. I mean, I, I entered the cemetery that I know someone that works. Right, in, right. That lets me go up. there at night yeah. on live streams. Yeah. Check out my streams. So I did, that. <laughs> I did that a bunch of times. I did Ouija board. I was doing this to raise money for Milford for the short yeah, film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And I'd be like, oh, I'm going to go to the cemetery tonight. We'll do Ouija board. And I was like, oh, an open grave. Let's get in it. So oh I got in this God. grave <laughs> and the boards are there. I'm like hanging in the grave. And I'm not touching. I'm like fully stretched. I'm six feet tall standing. So my leg, arms, I'm probably like, this is probably like, what, eight feet? Yeah. Toes weren't touching in the bottom of the grave. But wow. in Massachusetts, I dug the graves and they were like four or five feet deep. Like, <laughs> eh, good enough. It's like, I think four it was kind of like, yeah, it. that's enough. Because it was enough to bury the cement case. You also put a cement case in the ground. Uh -huh. right. And then you put the casket in that, put the lid, and then bury the dirt on top of it. A lot of times it'd be like this much dirt, like on top of the cement lid. So the casket's like right here. Oh my gosh. So it's like six inches. It's nothing. So yeah, wow. uh, but I would always often, sometimes they're deeper than others, depending on that there was a hill or whatever and his you know, roots. But I would, I was the guy that got in the grave before the person and squared it up. My coat, my, my, I said my really? coat, my boss scooped it with the excavator. Then I would be in the grave finishing. Do the finish it, work. Getting the rocks, the roots. So yeah. Wow. Man, yeah, yeah. they stack them here in California. That's a save money on oh, your plot. Really? Yeah, they put, you, you know. You, well, it's an upgrade. Like you, uh, you know, your your wife died. And yeah. Like, well, I want to be buried in there when I go. So, you know, leave they put you on top. Me too. Whoever yeah. whoever lives the longest gets a you the whole know, family. The top bunk. Yeah. One that, would, that makes me kind of claustrophobic thinking I'm like, yeah, you're under ground anyway. So whatever. But like being under a bunch of people, it's like, ooh. 
I'm trapped deeper, you know. Yeah, I feel like love, that, they're your loved ones. I feel so like whether I'm on. whether I'm under this much dirt or family members doesn't matter to me. <laughs> yeah, I get you know, that. It's the same level. What of if they got like fart gone, they're doing their death farts all over? Oh, that's oh, true. No. Yeah, but I'm the sealed death up. Farts. Yeah, yeah. they ain't like gonna death. be worse than mine. You did Milford. You did neutral as short films. Did you put those into uh, film festivals? Yeah, submitted to festivals, all mm -hmm. the big ones and then small ones, and uh, neutral got into a bunch. And one at one festival, neutral one at Sundance. this, I wish, oh. uh, it didn't win that, but it won one that was at Paramount Studios. I forget the name of this, oh. this, the festival, okay. but we won a, I won a black magic camera. I won like a bunch oh, of lights. Nice. Yeah. Best Sick. short film. And the people who voted were like my DP, Aaron Meister. He was like, these judges are legendary DPs. He was like talking to them all night. They, they shot oh, shit. Like, all these famous wow. movies. And they were yeah. like, your movie was such a good, well-rounded oh. movie. It was beautiful. It was told the whole story in like 20 minutes. They like were going off about it. I was like, was, well, thank you. Thank Roger you. Deakins. Was he like, <laughs> yeah, I, I love Keith Apicari too. Yeah, he's like, yeah, I love the, the, the classics. The chip favorite. tunes in the movie were my like chip <laughs> tunes. <laughs> Was that that was a disaster piece? Now was it? I don't no, think it was. No, that was Shadru, Roger. Shadru, yeah, yeah, okay, I like him. I like what yeah. he's James doing. Cameron from Comic Con showed up. He oh, yeah, remembered. He has key. <laughs> yeah, he's like you're, you're interrupting my panel tonight. Yeah. Get him, boys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> interrupts myself with my uh, victory That's speech. Dope. Yeah. So yeah, so, neutral did well. Milford, that's really cool. Milford, it was it played in a couple of things digitally during the pandemic. It was like not a great oh, time to okay. be in festivals. Uh, so uh, yeah. you know, I was just thinking about that. That was a dark time when, well, obviously the pandemic itself was. I mean, mm. you don't need me me to say that, but I just remember, you know, we do a lot of conventions through the year and different. There's different events we do every year, and all of them were virtual, and it was mm. just like. Kind of like telling people to watch eight hundred thousand virtual panels. Yeah, it was so frustrating. No one it was like, to do "Go it. record an hour thing for a panel. Go record that and then put it up." And then we, you know, it's like each event had like a thousand uploaded panels with one view. You know, and it was just like, yeah. "What are we doing?" Like, yeah. It was, yeah, that was a difficult time. So you know. I, I feel you on that. Yeah, so that was, I was like, okay, this is a bad year to like finish a movie and then put it out. Cause we just shot it right before the pandemic. Yeah. And then edited it and was ready to go. And then Corona what timing. Hit. Yeah. But I mean, out of all situations, you know, I suffered the least, I'm sure, out of many people. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. My film didn't get watched. But, <laughs> yeah. you know, it, I think it's, it's on YouTube now and people can watch it. So Milford is. Yeah. Milford. Oh, cool. it's, it's very different. It's like not comedy. It's just like, I just wanted to do something else. Yeah. Just something yeah. I, I had this like whole like hair piece glued on my head that looked like I had like long hair. I went to one of those places where like they actually do like the It bald. was a system. It was a system. Yeah. I had they like bicked my head and glued it on and like you could not take this thing off my head. It was Whoa. until you go in for like a tune up like they could take it yeah. off kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, they had right? to remove they, like, wow. work it off holy so slowly. Shit. I was like holy crap. Was it painful? No, it was oh, okay. I didn't hurt or anything, but it was cool to be like, wow, this is like that's what I would want to do for a film if I want to look different. It's like I'm just going to go all out and like you know, yeah. live in character. I had this goatee and like, I hated the goatee because I don't personally want to have a goatee myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It looks good on me. Yeah. So that, when I, was, I just looked like a very working class New England guy in the movie and that's the way I had to live. And I, I was like, it kind of helped me get into character and helped me get like mopey. And I was just like, kind of like yeah. bummed out. And it helped my brain a little bit. So it was cool. I looked very different. So in my opinion. It's so. funny how when, when you transform yourself even a little bit, it really kind of opens doors that mm. normally don't because I'll just say and Sean and I I can't speak for you Derek but I know me and Sean have talked about that is that when we're just being ourselves in a video it's like oh fuck I don't know what what am I yeah Did that was that good I don't know that's how I and feel. then when we do a video where it's like wear a hat and do an accent I'll give you a fucking performance yeah, ah, yeah, yeah. hello yes it's good to see you you know whatever and uh oh I, notch I think, yeah notch notch, there it is that, that was notch. Notch. <laughs> creator of minecraft well you create an idea yeah. and it gives you kind of a something to strive for yeah, yeah. yeah. But when you're just being yourself you're like i don't know what i'm striving for My yeah life is confusing am I? Like, yeah, where exactly am I going? exactly i always thought i was boring and that's why a reason i like to do characters so i'm mm. like the characters are interesting they're yeah, fun yeah i don't and i it made me like insecure almost about myself because i was like what do i what i don't have anything to offer like me oh, talking like this in a movie is like that's just Random guy number 82, like, why do I care about this guy? But if I put the glasses on and do Keith Abacary and yeah. walk off a cliff, whoa, what's that guy doing? Yeah. You know, that's what yeah. I, I'm the same way. Now, so on live streams, it took me a few years to feel like comfortable just talking. Cause I was like, I, this is like, anyone could do this, but 
you got to remember everyone has value and there is everyone's got interesting mm -hmm. stories and you are more of a character than you think you are because <laughs> i always think well, everyone's got bigger personality than me i'm just like yeah. boring standard man who gets interesting when i put different clothes on but if someone could do an impression of you then you are sort of an, a character you know what i mean mm -hmm. everyone is totally. their own character uh -huh. i've had to like teach myself that be like it's okay to just not be doing a bit but <laughs> I, I like it. I think it's more interesting putting on an outfit and I'd like to escape into that. It's more fun for me. I, I also think that people who get into what we are into actors and doing characters, uh, we, we see non actors in our life and we assume like, well, I, you know, I'm just like them not realizing like you have a lot more energy and that's why you do what you do. Mm. And so I, I always find that I don't realize how big I'm going with like stuff. Yeah, you know. I'm always told when I get like a job, they're like, tone it down. Tone, you're too, because I go so big. I have yeah. such big yeah. energy <laughs> that I, I they, everyone always wants subtle, subtle, pull subtle, it back. subtle, pull it back, pull it back. Yeah, because even <laughs> you tone down is going to be more energy I, than I've the average that. person. I've learned that for sure. But then there's times like on this Disney show, it's like, go as big as you can. So you go, it's like hard to find. Everyone wants something different depending on the project, mm -hmm. but yeah. yeah. So neutral is what you're focusing on for the next year? Streaming and neutral. Could people yeah. uh, find, is neutral available anywhere? Neutral is, is on the Nathan YouTube, the okay. original YouTube, not the dad one. Uh, it, uh, I was gonna say, maybe it's the featured thing right now, but I don't think it is. Um, yeah, just search neutral Nathan, you'll find it on YouTube. It's on Neutral my Nathan. Nathan sounds like a cool character. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Neutral He's very Nathan, milk yeah. toast. Yeah, yeah. So that's on YouTube. Cool it's villain. the only thing I've ever made that I'm actually proud of. Milford's cool too, but oh, like, come on, you Vince on, Diesel dude. driving like Vince Diesel almost cool, died. Cool. But Neo like, Geo I will say, video. I don't want to say I'm not proud of stuff, but like, I don't know, it's just an idea. I was like, yeah, I had an idea, I had something to do that day, and that's <laughs> yeah. pretty much what it is. Like, I don't talk about that. I always talk about neutral because it was like it was written from like emotion and that. Sure, I, yeah. I, I, it was the first project I did where I was able to act as a character that wasn't a super hard character it was kind of just me yeah and i was yeah. able to sort of make it interesting i feel mm -hmm. without doing it's like doing the cheap thing of like dressing myself up yeah, so yeah, i totally. was proud of it when it was done and also i feel i was able to incorporate a lot of the physicality into like what i've done like physical comedy and stunts into it in a unique way so the feature film i think i feel and i don't ever i try to be like I don't think my stuff's amazing. I don't think it's that great. Anyone can make good stuff, I'm sure, because we're all talented. But I do think it'll change my life if I finish this movie. And I think oh. it will boost things. And people yeah. will go, oh, okay. Maybe this is this your breakout guy, moment. Yeah. I, I feel because the ideas and the things I have planned for these scenes and the whole story, I think people will... I've like There's a scene in the, in the short, the 22-minute scene, where I get broken up with and visually how I show what it feels like to get broken up. People have talked talk to me about it for years of like, I've never seen someone do something like that. And that's such a good way to like show this. So knowing people are thinking that, I'm like, okay, well, I think they're gonna like this then in the future because I have other things I wanna do. And I think this will just be like my version of a film. This is what Nathan Barnett would make as a yeah. movie. And I think in like how the Daniels have taken off recently uh -huh. with uh, everything, everywhere, all at once. Oh, that? <laughs> that thing. <laughs> oh. So they got it's only an Oscar. Exactly. Yeah. The, they were shooting. That, what does that mean? They were shooting adult swim promos with me covered in blood, throwing that, like IV bags each other. And That's now they're winning Oscars. Crazy. And I'm like, what have I been doing with my I life? Remember, dude, they shot <laughs> yeah. Doug, Doug Pound's pilot. Yeah. I remember watching them. Oh, uh, they did a him thing with Doug in Pound. the club and all that. And it was like, I was all filmed by the Daniels. I was like, oh, oh, oh. They're that, in man. our world. That's like where they came from. And now For they're real. like, legendary director steven spielberg was like i love what the daniels are doing i'm like steven spielberg knows who the daniels are what the heck's but happening he does what? He know, well i don't mean to brag he does know mega 64 too does he he's shut like, up he's like really? Really? i really love those skits does, i love no, the haunted no, Wii. No. he likes figure update the movie i think no. he's onto your personal channel he watches figure update wow not, not our skits. yeah we're gonna get him in a, in a public it. video he's on you the know. rock of Odie you should have had him come here instead of me we bumped him for you we can't talk to him about wrestling we could talk to you all day oh yeah wrestling so i didn't mean to excite you that much you got you got you lit up there for a second. I, no, like, I, wow, I that's amazing. I wish. So you, you didn't mention uh, your off boxing training right now. You're taking it mm. easy after the last career. Yeah, clash. yeah. I'm now. I'm trying to focus on not physically exerting myself because okay. I did it so hard. I almost. Oh my god! You went so mentally hard. broke myself. <laughs> yeah, you're you're in your pizza era. That's yeah, good. I mean, I've been yeah, in that yeah, era a long time. Pizza era. <laughs> yes. I was boxing like a psychopath since last August, and I just stopped this past month. So it's nice. To yeah. not do that. No so, plans uh, to jump right back in and like get I, eight months of training. I in. will. Yeah, no plans soon, but I will box again. For you will. Sure. Okay. I will definitely do at least do Dad one will more return. Match. 
Dad will return, and you possibly will see other characters involved somehow, Ooh, possibly, okay. uh, in nice. the boxing thing. So yeah, excited. I will do that again, but would you guys box? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think I'm going to be your next opponent. Oh, probably. Uh, probably. That's what the internet wants. You know, we see a lot of that on Reddit. Yeah. You uh -huh. were talking uh, before we went on this podcast about what kidney shots and how uh, uh, liver you, shot, you, liver shot. And you feel it in your heart and you want to like, oh, vomit. yeah, you feel it. It's the worst feeling ever. It's horrible. And you have to stand there and not drop to the ground. It's <laughs> incredibly hard to do. Ugh. And uh, maybe, I coach, maybe, maybe I'll just do some maybe makes you work on that. <laughs> So, well, yeah. we haven't had like uh, we need to like take some liver shots on like a stream sometime and just see what it's like. I want to be like the even bikini I, wearing ring girl like who <laughs> announces the rounds. With you, the cards. Want the, you want the cards? Like that's what they were missing this year. <laughs> well, there me. was talk. I don't want to spoil anything for what they might do in the future, but Anissa had plans for ring girl type people. Oh yeah, and it was pretty cool what they had planned. I could tell you after. Okay. And I don't think they did it because it was like it was such a big show this year. It, was, it would have slowed things down even more with like 12 fights. Yeah, I'm, right. I'm guessing that's why they didn't do it. But I hope that they do that in one of the next years because they had a cool idea for uh, like the round people. It would have been neat. OK. So. Hey, if anybody watching the show wants Belle to Delphine wanted to do that, actually, she told That'd me she goes, I wanted to do like the ring thing, but she was considered to be a fighter. And she didn't really want to fight. So anyway, but I think someone like Belle would have been cool, too. But you know, I think also that you should have like a hunky man and like a guy. So I'm saying, yeah, I'm, well. I'm right here. I'm there available. Oh, yeah. Uh, we didn't even talk about your connection with Belle Delphine. You guys were doing oh. videos for a while. Mm. She's my pal. Yeah, uh, that's all it is. No matter what the internet likes to think, <laughs> <laughs> they got their wild fantasies. They, oh, they want to know there. if she's nice. We get a lot of that too. We she's super cool, very genuine, and uh, she's awesome. She's it's cool. It's really cool. She was a fan of mine. She messaged me after Creator Clash one, and I was shocked. I was like, "What? How do you even know who I am?" Huh. So yeah, we became friends, and she's really cool. So yep, yep. She's we awesome. gotta get her in a Mega 64 skit I know, too I know. Yeah. You know. I wouldn't be surprised if she was fans of yours. She like watches all of the internet. For she real. knows everything. Well, yeah. we mentioned her in a Todd and Aaron video once, so she probably, you know. Yeah, got, I'm got sure she, it was on her radar. Video. Yeah. Oh, those, everyone watched those. The Todd so, and Aaron's? Yeah. She Classic. Probably, oh, that is like our, it. you know, our ongoing. That's the one thing we do consistently every year and it gets bigger At the end of the year, right? Yeah. 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 Those are so funny. Thank you. Uh, what I was going to ask is for anybody watching, if they want to support you, what, what would you point them? Where, oh, where, where uh, would you recommend they go? Do they just watch your videos? Do they sign up for the neutral I'm trying to Kickstarter think of what people newsletter? Will actually do. Because like I'm someone that goes, yeah, I'm not going to click on anything. Well, where do but, you hope people go? <laughs> I hope people watch my Twitch because That's I've been streaming one. on Twitch every day. I love streaming on Twitch. It, Dad Feels is the YouTube name and the Twitch name. My original YouTube is Nathan Barnett. So you can look at anything you want, but I will be streaming a ton. I have a 40 day subathon I'm going to do where I'm going to stream oh, for awesome. 40 days starting in June. And oh uh, hope yeah, and it's by. not just video games. You do a lot of IRL stuff. You yeah, do I do like a lot. I did an dance. ice bucket yesterday or two days ago. Oh, I, wait, what? Yeah, I call it ice bucket challenge. Ch well, I call it chill screen, you know, like a kill screen, like on Pac-Man. Yeah. yeah, but chill screen, uh, you sit in an ice bucket. I did it on YouTube a few years ago on the Nathan YouTube. I get an ice bucket and I can't get out until I beat the level, like some oh, sort of a snow themed, oh, ice themed Jesus. game. So I was doing Mario Kart, uh, Mario 64 Snow World the other day. And my friend the Bob, the huge dude, yeah. did it. And it wasn't as cold for him because I put four bags of ice in and it got warm. I went and got more ice, put eight bags of ice in and new water when I got in it. And it was it was so cold, it was dangerous. Yeah, you gotta and go numb. It Were was you very like bad. teeth chattering as you're it, talking? It, like it was like knives stabbing my legs oh. and feet oh. it was in my and then my brother and, my, and bob were like this might be too cold but oh. bob was like no nah, it's nothing then he put his foot in. he goes okay never mind <laughs> that was stupid so that i didn't there, beat yeah. the level but we beat the level after i got out of the tub but i, I was like i'm gonna mess myself up but it's the thing i want to do i do stuff like that that's cool i like to do kind Physical of crazy challenges. things i did i danced for 12 hours non-stop on the stream crazy. during yeah. december i was gonna say you i don't know. mean to criticize but too long yeah, it was too long. I, I did like it, an hour. I did why, it. Why all the why twelve? I I was leading to that over <laughs> years. I did an hour downtown LA, just danced straight for an hour public. I did it, and then oh, I went okay. to Santa Monica. I danced for four hours. as random picked a random number to outdo the one. Danced for pub in the public for four hours as dad on the dad channel, and then I did one New Year's Eve. I did uh, ten hours 
leading up to oh New Year's, God. when it turned to New Year's, I did 10 hours nonstop <laughs> dancing. And then I was like, I kind of have to just do 12 and be done yeah. with it. Yeah. So on 12-12, 2022, I danced for 12 hours. I did it on YouTube, so it's logged as a video on the dad you channel. You went hard too. And oh I tried to dance, God. really dance. So I don't want people, I, I, my thought was like, if people ch check in and out throughout the day and yeah. they see me just going like, yeah, that's not cool. That's yeah. cheating. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I was yeah. like, I need to be dancing pretty hard the whole time, no yeah. matter when they're looking. And I feel I did a pretty good job of going Man, that's all amazing. out. That's did incredible. you prep logistically? Like, did you fast so you wouldn't have to go to the bathroom? <laughs> Make or? a playlist? I didn't do anything. <laughs> okay. I basically just got, How I got you? Pedialyte, okay. I got Gatorade, um, LCL, sorry, that's what, yes. from Neon Genesis. Yeah, of course, uh, <laughs> I, I'm dad bought, familiar. Dad yeah. bought Drinks LCL, it's a liquid that goes in the, the Mech Warriors, that surrounds the pod, Great. and that's what the dad bots drink to communicate with the glowing cube, it's the moisture in the air that connects his brain like Wi-Fi. Did you, did you just you have go. a stroke? Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm given sure. the lore Making of sure the dad good. story. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. There's okay, a dad more. story Science that like here. six people pay the attention angels to. angels come to Earth. Sack was the first angel. Dad and Neon Genesis, speaking of i just got a new masato tattoo the other day. you i you have oh, really? you have oh. ava tattoos i have too? three mas three masato tattoos god, that's damn. pretty much i just care about masato. i'm all ava up masato too. i don't even queen. know the name of the show oh my god you got ray right yeah. there this one ah, sleeps ah, ava this... i didn't know you had any Neo oh Genesis. yeah, yeah. I'm all, I'm all, oh I'm that's amazing out. oh very cool nice rocco's getting osaka a man next. of taste <laughs> i want to get, get the moves over my hammy no mine's gonna be uh lilith on the cross <laughs> yeah full back piece yeah oh full, you guys know neon genesis back. of course you guys like did oh the yeah, whole yeah, neon yeah. Genesis we did, thing. we did a yeah. live action we made it famous you did you yeah. guys we really got, got it, it to america on the map. Got yeah on the map. <laughs> got, got the map. zoomers to watch it yeah exactly yeah, you're welcome on a... zoomers are busy watching demon slayer and yeah. attack on titan we had to shorten they don't down watch neon genesis real anime uh i forgot yeah twitch is the thing i would say check out yeah go to the twitch okay, and, okay cool. and hopefully keep your eyes peeled for neutral i'm gonna try to get that going next year and make a movie and make something with myself yeah. someday yeah um, well yeah keep let an us eye know on we'll, we'll promote neutral yeah. i would and also love to have you guys in this movie so I we would a, love to do it. I, got a role, I have a role for Matt Watson, who I who, oh I assaulted last year at Creator Club. Oh, your yeah, son. Yeah, that's right. My so son, sad. Joe Rogan. I'm yeah, sorry. I heard about so that sad. on Rogan. It's just yes. pathetic. A father would do that to his the son. Tee yeah. off on your son you in the movie. You fucking failed as a father. <laughs> <laughs> as a father. That is you the failed. best thing to come out of that. Yeah, that was oh, amazing. So good. That like surprised for, everybody. For those who, <laughs> who don't know and never saw maybe, uh, Joe Rogan talked about Hit Nathan's fight with Matt Watson that last lasted year, 26 uh, seconds, but had no 20, idea 20, what he was watching. 22, he had no idea what he, was, he was watching uh, because Nathan went, went into it under the name Dad. So it's Dad versus Matt Watson, and somehow that turned into he thought a father the, was fighting his the son. The reason was because countless people were reloading our fight on Instagram and titling it Dad Beats Son <laughs> yeah, in boxing match, okay. and they put it on the <laughs> in the screen in the footage. They typed it on the yeah. footage and in the title of oh the upload. My God. It was happening. I was getting tagged in hundreds of like this is nathan barnett this is nathan barnett this is dad feels and yeah. then no one was reading the comments no so yeah, of course not. i guarantee you he show. saw one of those uploads and yeah. just watched it on instagram and believed it like everyone else believed because <laughs> i have a bald spot <laughs> and matt looks like he's 13 so uh, he looks like machine gun kelly why and would I, it and I lie like better call saul so <laughs> oh yeah. man yeah, why yeah. would it lie such a good clip, yeah, why though. does it lie why did that lie, help you did you see a boost of people discovering you from joe rogan no and that's what bothers me about oh they didn't tag you Come properly on. that's the thing that no one tags me and that's what i always, often often uh back when f jerry was stealing things yes was, oh i remember that he yeah. was stealing stuff from me too he took a couple things from me and i would message i often will message people or tag because i'll get tagged a lot yeah and uh, then eventually the uploader will be like oh sure and sometimes they'll add me to the description of the thing and i'll then yeah. will get followers but i often get upset when these people post my things because people uh, people will tell me mr beast has said this but i kind of agree and disagree it doesn't do me any good basically yeah. what it did was no one discovered me no one came and looked at me so people just think yeah. there's a dad out there that beat up a guy what do i care about that like they got entertainment but i didn't get any followers yeah so if you would follow if you could tag me i would gain something out of all this six months of training yeah, I did, yeah and i could yeah. get some followers if you don't mind but if they did tag me, it negates their whole joke they're trying to make of like a dad being up son because then people look into it. Yeah. They'll see, oh, it's not a dad. So they don't want to tag me because it exposes that their title is false. Yeah. So I didn't get any followers out of it. I just got people yelling at me, telling me I was ungrateful yeah. for wanting a tag and saying, this is the joke, dude. Deal with yeah. it. This is the internet. You oh. can take stuff and upload it. And I was like, okay, yeah. fine, sure. So I got people just mad at me. 
And that's pretty much it. But the it, nature of being on the internet is you create content and entertainment for free. And yeah. then when you're like, can I get something out of that? People were like, what the fuck? Why are you so greedy? Exactly. Yeah. bro. And they say, uh, people told me I was clout chasing myself. <laughs> I was like, how am I clout chasing? It's me. It's and you took kid. my video <laughs> and I want to get tagged in it. Like yeah. this guy is the clout chaser by uploading my hard work and getting millions of views and follows. And he did nothing. Yeah. He just ripped it's, it from the internet. It's funny. We we dealt with yeah. that a lot in the beginning because I think a lot of you know we a lot of people didn't know what Mega sixty four was, so people would just re upload our oh look real life Tetris. Uh -huh. And and it's like, can we get some credit here? What's going on? Then I feel like we had an era where it's like, okay, it's all gaming related, and if you know, okay, you can't just repost the Mega sixty four video at this point because they're on YouTube. It's yeah. a known thing. But then I felt like it came back once we started doing these anime related videos because maybe we're maybe we reached a new audience. Oh, the Facebook who didn't audience know who too. we were. Oh, or my stuff was stolen big time. My gymnastics videos were yeah. stolen on Facebook yeah. by gymnastics. Facebook I, think would I, steal. I even saw that. Yeah. I they think. were getting yeah. more views than I ever got on YouTube. And yeah. I didn't get anything out of that because I wasn't using Facebook anymore. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We we our our DBZ were videos where we recreated DBZ sagas and stuff would just get like, you know, Mike's Gohan. Uh, fan, fan page or DBZ yeah. fan page would just post our video and people would be like, "This is the most brilliant fucking video I've ever seen." So Great annoying. job, Mike. Yeah, it's and like who the fuck saw, is this? Like, <laughs> yeah. um, in like another country, like Brazil or some something, somebody made a commercial <gasps> which to us seemed like a direct rip off of yeah. our video, and I was no. like, "Well, you could have got us to do it for Nisa." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Done it. Somebody probably just took the video and pitched it like, "I'll make something like this." Mm -hmm. with a way bigger budget yeah, than yeah. what we used to make the original. Yeah. I've seen many commercials that are shot exactly like my dance videos where it cuts around totally. fast. Yeah, the person's I have spot. too. Yeah, and yeah. it's like, well, I bet you they saw some of my dance videos yep. and went and yeah. did this and got some other guy to do it. Because you know, in a pitch meeting, they're showing a viral video. We oh, can yeah. do something like this. And, and they're the story, like, just make that exactly. And they're like, yeah, copy this. Yeah. Uh, interesting story. <laughs> Fatal Farm, when I auditioned for that commercial, the chili commercial that yeah, I, yeah, I'm yeah, in, yeah. Uh, I went to the audition and I saw the break breakdown and when you sign in there's like a breakdown explaining it yeah. and it says a nathan barnett type and then on the vi it shows shit. a video a treatment of what they want the actors to how to dance yeah it was my videos and i was oh, like oh, this is oh, weird oh, for the other actors because they're the one guy goes i'm trying you? out against you and i was like yeah that's me and yeah. i was like oh the fatal farm just wanted me in this commercial but they had to do the audition uh -huh. so because oh, the, oh. the agency was like we want to see other possibilities i'm sure i know how it works they're like yeah. just in case there's another guy that's funnier yeah. than the guy you like Let's yeah. have an audition. But it was awkward when I was in there for these other actors who were like, oh, you're yeah. going to do your move better than I'll do your that move. That reminds me of the famous story that Charlie Chaplin once got third place in a Charlie Chaplin lookalike contest. Yeah. So, so it's funny. like, we want a Nathan Barnett type, but not you, because this you. other guy did it better. Yeah, exactly. Because like, yeah. this yeah. guy is funnier than you yeah. as you. <laughs> you never there, know. <laughs> there's one thing. Uh, well, I'm not going to say. I don't know if we've ever even talked about it, Derek. So maybe I'll save the, oh, my comment shit. for after. But there's one thing out there on the, in the video game world that I've had multiple people go like, hey, I, I had. Did you guys work on this thing? No. OK, because when we had meetings, it was always like your name brought up like mega 64 style this mega 64 style that oh really like you guys were the template for this and it's like yeah why didn't they ask us and yeah. i it, this thing we're has so always cheap. bugged me i'll tell you later but we're not going to talk about it but, oh, I, wow. but i've had this Secret but everybody. i've had this happen to me multiple times where they're like wait you're you're, you're not you're still not involved in that because they always bring you up and it's like nope wow and anyway so uh That's not just with that but there's been a few things throughout time where it's like they want what we do, but like don't they want someone else to do it or they don't know us or they or yeah, they don't yeah. think that, or maybe they don't trust us to do it. I don't know. I don't know. Weird. The Internet is strange. It's like it's sort of the Wild West still. Yeah, I think it always will be because the fact that someone can just screen record something and upload it. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And he, On like, their phone now. We don't have huge lawyers like a studio just ripping stuff down. Yeah, so yeah. It's hard. But also, yeah, you can give. That's another thing. It's like intellectual property and like ideas. People get a lot of ideas. There was a sketch I was in. Uh, it's not a sketch. A short film Tig Notaro did uh, oh. where I was a clown. It's called Clown Service. She, she orders a clown. I come over to cheer her up, and it's just her. And I was like, "Where's the party?" She's like, "No, I'm depressed. Just like cheer me yeah. up." And it's this weird <laughs> it's short sketch. film where yeah. then I, her and I spend time together, and like we talk, and it's this whole like nice little short. Like um, she puts it out. She's friends with Louis C.K. Mm -hmm. He was like knowing about her short and helped her somehow with it, and then. Uh, he goes on SNL like the next year or like six months later and does a sketch 
no. on SNL where Bobby Moynihan plays my character <laughs> and comes and cheers him up alone. Is like, and he's like the whole, exact same Holy thing. Shit. And it was a whole new story where like SNL steals Tick Notaro's sketch and they're just showing me pictures of me and Bobby Moynihan. <laughs> it's like <laughs> the comparison <laughs> on how and like, side by sides. That, that Tig was trying to say, like, maybe, you know, people forget they hear an idea and they forgot. She's like, I'm willing to say, like, it was an accident, but like, it was literally written exactly. So the writer, yeah. whoever pitched it, or if Louis, because a lot of times the guests on SNL will pitch ideas in the beginning of the week. Yeah. And he might, you know, Kuda very well said, there's an idea. And the short wasn't like really known or anything at that yeah, point. It might yeah. not even have been out. And I think she then put it out because I don't remember how the timeline worked, but. That you never, you always could have been yeah. Louis. Could they have also been just recreated the writers. what does the fox say on yeah. SNL? Yeah. SNL? Yeah, they did yeah. a parody of a parody song. Or well, it wasn't oh, the a parody blue, song, the guy that talked about reason, the guy that was a blue, they did the blue cartoon or something. Have you heard about that? Is that what you're talking about? SNL no. did a did a sketch that's exactly like this cartoon this guy made on YouTube, oh, and he made really? a video about it recently. It was like, I'm not oh, saying they stole yeah. my thing, but yeah, I did hear about the that. exact comparison. SNL's done this a lot. I, James Adomian is an actor that I'm friends yeah. with. Yeah. He uh, auditioned uh, for SNL multiple times and he does a Vincent Price character. Okay. He never got the show, but then they uh, started doing a Vincent Price character. Bill Hader yeah. that year did a Vincent Price character. And James Adomian was like, just saying, producer saw something they liked for all, from all the auditions and told this actor, you do that now. That's got to happen so much. I mean, they that's have a, to churn stuff out week in and week out. I don't think they even think about exactly. us. You know, or they just like, realize I'm, they can get away with it. Yeah. Like, Lauren yeah. needs this tomorrow. What am I going to give him? Fuck. Uh, yeah. They just, they're not even thinking. Uh, there is a comment. I don't, I'm not saying Bill Hader didn't have a similar character for sure. There's Ed Bassmaster does a similar character to me. He does a nerdy guy. His, uh, yeah. what's his character? I forget. Um, Ed Bassmaster's nerdy character. People yeah, often tell yeah. me I'm ripping him off, and uh, I have to remind them mm, I did Keith Apicary before Ed did his. Uh, <laughs> what is that yeah. stupid character's name? I can't remember. And sometimes just having but, a similar sense of humor, you may you exactly, might arrive at the yeah. same idea. Yeah, but, and not even know what each other is doing. You yeah. know, great minds. But sometimes like. that's an excuse of, of I could have thought of this, so I'm gonna steal it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. it's in my ilk, anyways. So it is. That's the problem you run into when you're making stuff and putting it out. It's like. It's never going to be smooth sailing all the way. Someone right. will have yeah. an idea that's similar. Oh, well. Yeah. Well, we uh, we've been going for a long time. Oh, yeah. all right. All right. I think. Uh, but I don't want to leave. All right. Well, let's keep going. Then. No, no. Just kidding. We can, <laughs> we, yeah. No. We, well, I'm kidding. I'm are we doing after hey, show today? Uh, we can. Well, okay. hey, I do want to take have a minute. To We're so, you know, there, there's. I never want to interrupt a great conversation. I do feel it's coming do, sort of to an end. I don't want to sure. kill the natural progression. Of oh the yeah. Hold of on. Everything. There's something really important I have to do though. No. Theme song. Oh. oh. Welcome to the Mega 64 Podcast, everybody. We're, we're going to have gonna, a great show tonight. It's going to be a great episode. It's going to be uh, awesome. I hope you liked our intro. Uh, we're going to you know, kind of kick things off the right way. Uh, we got about two hours of Zelda talk coming up, but uh, <laughs> I just wanted to take a moment to plug our sponsors, viewers like you. Go to shop.mega64.com and pick up. We got some of the best merch, some of the best apparel, some of the best media. Oh, yeah. You know, you think we're not doing, you know, a lot of these YouTubers aren't brave enough to put out physical media of their stuff. You think they got Blu-rays? You think they got their own musical work on vinyl? Nah, we do. So get all that there. Um, this last Friday, we put up, we got a whole summer collection from our good friend, Mariel. You know her as Kinu Cakes on Twitter. A bunch of her past designs are up for pre-order now on our web, on shop.mega64.com. You can pick those up. Uh, those, the pre-orders are coming down in the next few days, though, so get on it. We also like to do something every week called the 64-hour special where we have a shirt or something that's only available for 64 hours, and it's gone. We have one a returning classic tonight, two of them. Oh, you're bringing uh, it back? Yeah, we were talking about the film industry. I don't know if you're a big uh, sand, uh, Sandler nut. But uh, his like two that, biggest right. movies, uh, Dickie Peeper, Halloween Creeper, yep, and uh, Mr. Galuber's Magic Gaduber, which are two are two classics. We haven't had those uh, shirts available in a long time. 
Uh, but you know, the film industry was so thirsty mm -hmm. um, that you know they're back. So we Happy just Happy uh, Madison collab locally yeah. here in San Diego. We have found out that these shirts have become popular with the teenagers mm. who apparently love Adam Sandler, mm -hmm. which I get it because I love Adam Sandler. Oh, too. he's got so many Netflix movies, and you know, they're yeah, straight, that's yeah. what they're really uh, picking up the Netflix movies. Yeah. Yeah, Dicky Peeper, the Netflix movie. Dicky Peeper's uh, Halloween. So we want to reintroduce this guy. to the wider public out there to yeah. spread the Sandler. I don't know what what we're spreading actually. The I, Sandlerverse. Th these these bootleg shirts. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, so anyway, those shirts are up now, and and uh, the Mariel's whole collection, the Mega sixty four Kinuko collection. That's up for pre order too. So get all that stuff. You can only get it at shop.mega64.com and. You can also go to patreon.com slash mega64. We put up a ton of stuff over the last week. Two movie clubs went up in one week. Whoa. Uh, multi, two classics, Maltese Falcon and Windy City Heat. Uh, two oh, definitive detective noirs. Both got a movie club episode where we talk about <laughs> it at length. But also, we did a thing where we're, we, uh, Sean found a device at a thrift store called a Sip and Sing, where it's a mug combined with a working microphone oh like karaoke it's a device from the 80s and he tries to get it working uh we got that we get we did a friend to mention uh where we were uh where johnny was playing dark souls it's been a while since we talked about our patreon so a bunch of stuff has gone up uh cool. so anyway you got to check it out there's a ton of exclusive stuff patreon.com slash mega 64 and we have an event coming up june 4th guess what it's finally our 20, our actual 20th anniversary, and yeah. it's Mega 64 Day, 6-4. So we're going to have a day-long celebration on Twitch starting at noon Pacific on Ju Sunday, June 4th. Tune in to uh, Mega 64 Day. We're going to have a lot of exclusive content that we've yes. been preparing. We've actually been working on it for the past few weeks to celebrate 20 yes. years of Mega 64. Yeah. Which is crazy because I'm only 25 years old. Yeah. So I don't even know how this nuts. math works. I don't. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah, that's yeah, wild, man. Space time continuum stuff. Yeah. It's like you're forever young on film. You know, you're captured. You like remember the James Dean, though. He's, he's dead. Yeah. Right? So that's you because you're always on camera. It's keeping you looking. Yeah. It's like a picture of Dorian Gray. I, the, the videos age, but I stay the same. Yeah. I'm, but if somehow, you always stay on yeah. camera, you're never going to get we've old. talked exactly. about though. Exactly. We, we've talked about like how we've maintained a youthful appearance and and in in our own. Because you see my yeah. job for the past in our own years? words, exactly. this is fucking stress free lifestyle. <laughs> well, yeah. that combined with the fact that like we're very aware, like you know, we have to be on camera. Like, oh, I gotta look at myself uh, all the time, and I'm like, mm -hmm. and, and it you puts know, you in check. I'm like, shit. I and you mentioned this, uh, you're 42. Oh yeah, I, you certainly I should don't show look you guys. It, I don't know if I have it on my phone. I took a picture of my three licenses in the past. Just show uh, your license on the years. camera. I actually That's censored fine. credit the cards images. too. You're already you're already well. I did censor the addresses and all sensitive information. But if you look at this, this is from 2013. Uh, if zoom a in on that. You might have to hold I'll, it up I'll, to the I'll, camera. Let me do make it not as bright. Maybe it'll help. If you can see. Well, let's take it all the way up to <laughs> oh the camera. Just God. go ahead and walk it you up to that camera there. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll to Kevin's that. camera because we got to see this. I was just going to add that I feel, and I have a reason why I can say that when I come back to the mic, I feel I've been getting younger on camera oh yeah. okay so, yeah okay but you this, be the judge at is, home everybody. the first one is 2013 and then the second license is 2060 18 okay. and then the new one is my license from last month five years apart okay every picture is five years apart got. okay hold on so that's uh go to the top <laughs> one 2013 oh 2018 yeah. you are you're you're benjamin button over there yeah right that's why dude you really have. Yeah. Wow. Look at the top one. I look That's scary. Insane. That's <laughs> This is the picture that the cops saw. That's uh, <laughs> That's part of the competition to have the worst photo ever. Yeah, that was from my brother. My brother beat me though cuz his tongue was hanging out of his head and he was like eyes were crossed. How do you pull that off? Because I they won't you even let you stay, smile when you I have go to the DMV. You keep the face when you walk up to the counter. Yes, okay. Uh, that's what so I So that's had to what do. I did when I took mine. I was like, "Oh, they're not going to let me smile." Well, guess what? And the whole time I'm walking in, I'm going they just think that's how you're like facing. that. That's what I did. And then they one. took the photo and oh, wow. I lived to regret it because that photo, <laughs> it, I, I had to be at the DMV at like six in the morning or something. So I, my hair is messed up. I'm in like this ratty hoodie and I'm going, 
like that. I look like the shoe bomber. I'm just like, I just, <laughs> I just look like I'm, uh, you know, just not. You're in a like good Joker place. without the makeup. Yeah, exactly. They, yeah, they I'm don't like, like you smiling. I've yeah. learned because they want everyone to have a neutral face, so when they can identify you, you're yeah. not. It's easier to identify you. Yeah, yes. So my brother and I will go in, and I make my hair wild, and I go in like this. And I just keep this face like, hi, how's it going? And I just talk yeah. like a crazy person yeah. the whole time. So that's like the the plan is like to do it. And Ed Bassmaster, actually, we mentioned earlier, has a video I think he put out. I know he did this. I either saw it in a video or he told me he like made his face look insane with yeah. spray paint and stuff. And he <laughs> went in and got his license picture looking like that. And it worked out. I think it was him. But I went to the DMV looking like a crazy person. That was when I was 10 years ago, 32. Do I looked like a Krusty the Clown. And then a couple of years ago, I was just kind of clean cut. I looked like my dad. And then this year, I look younger. It's, but it's because, I don't know if I told you guys ever this, I had my hair rearranged a couple of years ago, right before oh. the pandemic. I actually went into oh, a transplant real? where they, I did oh. it for acting, oh, wow. where I was like, I, you know, I'm always playing the janitor. I'm always playing the weird old character. It would be nice to have a little bit of a hairline. And I told the guy I just wanted like Bruce Willis. Just give yeah. me a little bit. I was going to keep it shaved and have just a hairline in the front of my yeah. head. And okay. I'd keep it short. So yeah. it was just that hairline would be like, okay, not fully bald. Yeah. I can play like a little bit of a not creepy person. Because as a bald actor, you're always getting like the psycho. Yeah. Super. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, always getting the sketchy roles. I was like, I kind of like to just play a regular guy. Yeah. So I was like, all right. I got convinced. I was like, I'll do it. But then way more hair grew in than I expected to grow in. So yeah. it's like a lot thicker. So I'm not complaining, but like I did do it to like, I was gonna play Keith, I was gonna keep it thin on top yeah. and yeah. grow Keith's hair up. Cause when I first started doing Keith Apicary, I had a little bit of like thin hair and I didn't, I like him having crispy little thin wispy hairs on top of my head <laughs> and way more grew in. So because of that, the guy did such a good job. I now look 18 again. <laughs> yeah. <Nice. laughs> you like Tom Cruise, you know, you just keep looking better with every age, <laughs> Can't every <help> passing year. <laughs> but yeah, anyways, so uh, yeah, you too could, uh, have hair rearranged. Nice. Well, uh, everyone at home, check it out. Do it. Check Nathan, it out. Uh, I just want to say thank you for coming on the show. Yeah, yeah. yeah this was a great episode. Here. I think everybody oh, loved you. it. I so. think everyone loved it. And again, if it if if we had just had Sean do this, we did have heard about the Padres like eight hundred times by this point. Yeah. So you <laughs> saved us from that. Um. Yeah, I can't thank you enough just yeah. for that. Oh, and you're welcome back pleasure. anytime you want to yes. come on the I show. I would like to be here when Sean's here because I haven't seen him in a while and I miss him. He did send me a message. It was like, sorry, I can't be there. But oh, yeah. See you soon. So I will hopefully see you guys soon anyway. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Uh, again. Open, open door policy for you. Thank Not you. everybody. Thank you. I am a big fan. I love you guys all. Hopefully. Oh, thanks. We love you uh, too. I'll see you shortly. We're rooting, yeah. we're rooting for uh, your breakout film next year. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, you'll be in it. So, we'll yeah. Okay, okay good. Hopefully. Now we're really rooting for it. <laughs> yeah, we're rooting extra hard. Nice. Johnny, you have anything you want to add? Uh, no, I'm good. No, you, Johnny's good. Oh, uh, we wait. I saved that's it for it. the end so you could ask a really cool question. Okay, that's it. I'm good. That's all he's got. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. We will uh, see you next time. Have a good one. <laughs> Bye.